Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if banished Naruto returns with his family. Before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by Ken Miyamoto and link in the description and support writer. Let's start the video. Chapter 1. Live. A slight clenching noise could be heard as fingertips came into contact with metal, the hand shook slightly, with its white knuckles grip on the object in the hand of the holder. The object was being held as if it were the most precious item in the world to its wielder. I'm sorry. The voice of an older woman said while well, the wielder of the object lifted it along with his head toward the source of the voice, blue eyes filled with confusion, anger, and even a hint of betrayal, met with the slightly distraught face of the voice. You're sorry I I just don't get it. What the hell did I do? The voice of the young man raised while the older voice sighed, the failure of the mission to retrieve Sasuke has been attributed to your inability to do what needed to be done due to the state of your relationship with him, not to mention the potential threat of the Kaiubi sealed within you being unleashed again, the older voice said, while she could barely look at the boy trembling in front of her. It was official. Tsunade, one of the three great Sanin and currently the fifth Hokage of the village hidden in leaves, hated her job. The near endless piles of paper were one thing, the political ass kissing of the council to keep the peace was another. But this moment above all else made her hate her job more than anything in the world. She wanted to run. Tsunade wanted nothing more than to hold the boy standing in front of her, hold him close, and turn her back on all of those that wanted to hurt him. She wanted to cry for him. However. She couldn't allow him to see any of it. Naruto Uzumaki didn't deserve this cruel fate the village council decided in a manner that left her powerless to act against it, she had been practically forced to make this decision, and she was unable to change a thing. Despite being the Hokage, the greatest ninja in the village. The one that everyone looked to for prosperity and protection, the very same kind of ninja that the boy in front of her strove to be. She felt useless. That's a load of crap. I fought Sasuke tooth and nail to bring him back. I just I just wasn't. Naruto trailed off while his grip on the object in his hand tightened before his fingers slowly relaxed, his arm went limp in front of him. His blonde hair slightly covered his face while he exhaled slowly from his nose in an attempt to calm himself. I wasn't strong enough. Naruto said while Tsunade closed her eyes taking her own breath to compose herself before she opened them again, this punishment will be effective immediately, a jonin has been assigned to oversee your departure and is currently at your residence where you will pack any necessities and be escorted to the village gate. Tsunade said while well, the teen in front of her looked toward her with a pained expression. Granny. Naruto trailed off while Tsunade briefly broke eye contact looking down at her desk, I'm sorry Naruto you'll have to leave it. Tsunade said while well, the blonde looked toward the object in his hands before his grip clenched around it. He wanted to slam it down. He wanted to yell at the top of his lungs and call bull on this entire process, however all of those feelings were overwhelmed by the overwhelming feeling of dread, completely swallowing any words of protest the boy had. The blonde placed the object on the desk of the Hokage, while Tsunade struggled to keep eye contact on Naruto, the blonde's head quickly lifted his blue eyes directly meeting Tsunade's, while she embraced her well-deserved verbal lashing. Hey, granny. Naruto trailed off while his fingers trailed on top of the metal of the object in his hand resting on the desk, yes. Tsunade asked, nearly failing to hide the emotion in her own voice hidden while her eyes widened, getting a look at his face. Thanks for everything. Naruto said in a defeated tone his tears silently ran down his, while Tsunade felt her heart shatter to pieces, his hand finally left the object on her desk. He turned around leaving Tsunade only the back of his jacket to look at while she reached her hand toward his retreating form, the words that she wanted to speak clung to her throat. By decree of the Hidden Leaf Village of the Land of Fire, Naruto Uzumaki was hereby banished from the village due to his failure to retrieve the last Ichiha of the Hidden Leaf, as well as the danger his existence poses on the village being the container of the Kayubi. This is what the official records will state. Wood splintered underneath the grip of Tsunade's hand, while thunder clapped rumbling the sky with a similar fury that the blonde Hokage fell toward her position, her hand that had been forced, and even those who she knew would celebrate upon his departure. Tsunade hated her job. Not just because of the piles of nearly endless paperwork, not just because of the political ass-kissing she had to do with the council. But because she had become the reason for that look on his face. The boy who had faced down her stubbornness as well as forces that were far beyond his own power even the darkness that was left in her heart from her previous losses from years in the world. Without a chance in hell yet he had saved her. How did she repay him? By getting rid of him to appease the public. The sound of the door closing finally allowed that sickening sob to exit her throat, she could have chuckled at the irony. Every time she had loved she had lost just as quickly now she was directly responsible for it. 
Tsunade quietly sobbed while her other hand stamped the sheet of paper on her desk making the order official. She didn't dare look up at what Naruto had left on her desk, while the few rays of light hidden by the storm clouds in the sky shined on the object. The symbol of the leaf shone on Naruto's headband in the sliver of sunlight as Tsunade trembled while her desk continued to crack under her grip. Minus five days earlier. The door slid open, revealing Tsunade with her other hand pushing some of her hair out of her face, following behind her was a clearly nervous Shizune who looked around slightly before Tsunade groaned. Nearly the entirety of the council is here did something big happen? Shizune asked before Tsunade shrugged, who knows, probably a civilian squabble. Just relax and let the old people gripe ga hangovers suck. Tsunade said while the black-haired woman gave her mentor a look mixed with slight worry and exhaustion from her typical antics that she has unfortunately become adjusted to under her tutorage. Only she of all people would walk into a possible super important village council meeting hungover, usually Shizune would have helped her deal with her mentor's hangover as part of her medical ninjutsu, focusing on illness's practice at least that is what Tsunade always called it, despite Shizune always knowing it was an excuse to make her feel better. This time however the summons were urgent, meaning they had little time to even speak amongst each other, before leaving to the conference, leading them directly to the meeting area for the elders and council, Shizune couldn't shake off her nervous feeling that was creeping over her entire frame, almost as if something bad was about to happen. Maybe it was because of the multiple super important faces in the room, or maybe it was because of the fact that Tsunade was obviously in not the best shape to properly participate due to her nightly escapades, but something felt off to the young woman. Tsunade, good of you to join us. We have much to discuss, hopefully keeping this meeting quick. Amura, one of the teammates of her own sensei the former third Hokage, said while another older woman nodded her head, this one being Kaharu, she was also on a team with Hiruzen together they were the main heads of the council, meaning they were both pains in the ass to deal with. However the one face that made Tsunade pay a bit more attention was one that had been covered by bandages, Danzo Shimura one of the village elders, and perhaps the most stubborn and selfish old bastard Tsunade has ever had the displeasure of meeting. Lady Tsunade. Anzo greeted in a calm, almost glad tone, one that Tsunade knew was riddled with falseness. She resisted the urge to scoff before she looked toward the other two elder counselors, all due respect, but what is he doing here? Tsunade asked while Danzo chuckled. I'm merely here as a representative of the people you could say, they could always use a proper voice. A village is a family after all. Anzo said, making Tsunade's eye twitch at the elder's use of her former teacher's words while Hamura nodded his head, Danzo brings with him a valuable opinion in regard to our discussion for today. Hamura said while Kaharu slowly nodded her head in agreement to his words. Tsunade quickly understood what kind of meeting this was going to be. Shizune leave. Tsunade said while Shizune gave Tsunade a look of confusion, Shizune wordless reacted she wanted to refuse in case something happened, but she could feel the way the atmosphere of the room suddenly changed, as much as she wanted to be there to support her mentor, she knew that it she had no place here in this meeting. Shizune bowed her head before she turned to exit out of the room, while Tsunade took her seat at the table with the other elders, what's on the agenda today? More discussions of war potential. I believe I made it clear that war is the absolute last option I would resort to for anything. Tsunade said, rubbing circles on her temple, hoping that would shut them up as usual. Lady Tsunade, our discussion today is in regard to Naruto Uzumaki. Kaharu said while Tsunade suddenly felt her throat go dry for a moment before she sat up fully in her seat, now fully concentrated hangover be damned. The blonde's brown eyes immediately flicked over toward Danzo's one exposed eye looking back at her. He was watching her, that old bastard already had some kind of plan up his sleeve, she could feel it. What about him? Tsunade asked while keeping her composure Kaharu looked toward Hamura before the man looked toward Tsunade, we believe he should be restricted in his movements. Hamura said while Tsunade raised an eyebrow. On what grounds? Tsunade asked while Kaharu lifted one of her fingers, his recklessness for one, not to mention his most recent failure in his mission to retrieve Sasuke Chiha, nearly the children of multiple village heads killed. While no one was killed admittedly it was still a massive risk, the slap on the wrist was too light of a punish for the mission failure. Kaharu stated while Tsunade's eyes widened. You can't be serious, they are all fully fledged shinobi. Extremely capable ones, every shinobi is fully prepared for death on the battlefield, that's nothing to blame a single shinobi on. Tsunade said while Danzo placed his hand on the table gently, pointless death's death is one thing, and a shinobi should die a death that benefits the lives they swore to protect. However Sasuke, while being an asset to the village, wasn't worth nearly all the lives of those who will inherit the village. Certainly not for a failed mission. Danzo said while Tsunade gritted her teeth. I'm in agreement with Danzo, had the mission been successful then admittedly even we could have turned an eye. However if they had died and the mission was still a failure, then their deaths would have been pointless, and we would have had major losses. 
Amura stated while Kahara nodded, Naruto needs to be reprimanded for his failure in some way. Honestly you've been far too light on the boy considering what he is. Kaharu finished while Tsunade gritted her teeth fighting back the growl in her throat. Naruto Uzumaki is a shinobi of the hidden leaf. While I can agree he deserves some kind of punishment, I hardly believe that restricting his capabilities as a ninja is the proper answer. Tsunade raised her voice before she quickly closed her mouth again looking toward Danzo, whose expression had become a tiny smile, the blonde Hokage had screwed up, she could feel it in that damn smile of his. I'm in agreement with Tsunade. Danzo said while the rest of the room gave him looks of shock, she's passionate about the well-being of the shinobi, and yes officially Naruto Uzumaki is a shinobi of the hidden leaf, so he hardly deserves to be restricted. Danzo said while Tsunade merely blinked at the man. She had no idea what he was going on about, she was expecting a debate full of resistance from Danzo, instead he seemed rather accepting. No. Something was off. Instead as a leaf shinobi who failed this mission nearly costing most of the village heads their children, the punishment is obvious. Danzo said Tsunade's glare never left his one visible eye, while Kaharu and Hamura looked toward the man with bated breath while he slammed his bandaged fist on the table. Exile. Danzo said while Tsunade froze for a second looking toward the stoic man, her head turned toward Hamura and Kaharu who to her worst fears didn't seem to be against the idea at all, Tsunade gritted her teeth standing up out of her seat. You can't be serious. Exile he's just a child. Tsunade yelled while Danzo gave her an apathetic look, he's the container of the Kaiubi, his very existence is a threat, especially given his own history with the leaf who knows, maybe the real reason why Sasuke got away was because Naruto deliberately let him go. Danzo commented snidely while Tsunade narrowed her eyes at the elder. Danzo, you know that's not true in the slightest. Tsunade growled while Hamura looked down toward the table, we also don't know if it isn't true, they were both friends. There could have been a bias there allowing Sasuke to leave as he wished. Hamura commented coldly while Kahara nodded her head. Meaning that the mission to retrieve him would have indeed have been pointless. Including any deaths that could have been involved. Kaharu commented while Tsunade felt a wave of sickness wash over her, she had personally seen Naruto's injuries. That boy should have died twice over from what she had to heal, he had given it his all, and this man had the audacity to undermine that. Naruto is still a leaf shinobi, it should be precisely because he's the container of the Kaiubi that he remains in the village. Allowing a Jinchuriki to the devices of the rest of the world is more dangerous than a foolish kid. Tsunade argued while Kaharu and Hamura's eyes widened slightly, Lady Tsunade brings up a really good point, while yes Naruto does deem a threat to the village, the fact that we have the Kaiubi here means we can monitor it. Hamura commented, prompting Kaharu to nod. Tsunade's brow rose watching Kaharu lift a finger, unless there's a reliable method to eliminate the Kaiubi as a threat for certain, then Naruto being away from the village could be more detrimental than beneficial. Kaharu said while Tsunade looked toward the two elders while the sick feeling she had slowly vanished. Tsunade slowly sat back in her seat giving Danzo a challenging look, you'll have to do better than that Danzo, Naruto is crucial, despite how much you or anyone else may hate him. I'm not backing down so easily Tsunade thought to herself while she waited for the expression on Danzo's face to crack, instead she felt a chill. The tiny never left his face, it only grew. Lady Tsunade have you ever walked around the village of the Hidden Leaf? Just a stroll, to greet its people to watch the families working and playing. Danzo asked while Tsunade tilted her head in confusion toward him, of course, I don't understand the relevance that has here. Tsunade said while Himura and Kaharu were also confused looking toward their fellow elder. Everything that I do is for the peace and prosperity of this village, it is my home. The place that I've bled for and killed for in order to protect from those who wish to harm it. The only thing I have ever wished for is what's best for the village. Danzo said while Himura and Kaharu looked toward each other, while Tsunade was trying to understand his angle. The Kaku Yamino. Danzo said while Tsunade blinked, Danzo. Tsunade said in a warning tone while the man merely gave her a look, Kasai Chiha, Hana Izakami Danzo continued, while both Kaharu and Himura's faces slowly morphed into somber ones. Oro Masato, Kahari Yamino. Danzo said while Tsunade roughly placed her hand on the table, Danzo what's the relevance of this? Tsunade asked while still confused, while his dark colored eye made direct contact with hers coldly. Ashina Yuzumaki and Minato Namikas. Danzo finished while Tsunade's blood ran cold, those names. They were all. Victims of the attack of the Kaiubi, precious lives that were a part of our family as a village snuffed out by that beast on a whim. They died protecting their village and all of that for what? A boy who only caused trouble. An unpredictable ninja unable to be controlled to properly contribute to atone for all of the destruction wreaked on the village. Danzo said while Hamura looked away while Kaharu kept her eyes on the table, he was just a baby Danzo, that hatred is unwarranted. He still contributes to this day as a ninja by working harder than anyone else, Naruto doesn't need to be controlled. Tsunade said while Danzo blinked. 
Oddly enough Lady Tsunade I agree with you. He was a baby and a sacrifice used to protect the village left to us by the fourth Hokage, however have you stopped to consider what those same families you've observed had lost. Watching that boy walk freely and cause havoc around the village while they lay flowers on the graves of their loved ones. Anzo said while Tsunade went quiet, the elder pulled a couple of scrolls from his clothing before unraveling them on the table. The scrolls contained lists of names from across the leaf village, one of them was labeled stay, the other one was labeled go. A quick survey from the entirety of the leaf village, just to see what the public thinks about Naruto Uzumaki. I will say I'm impressed this was a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. Anzo said while the three other individuals looked at the scrolls, Tsunade paled seeing the names on the go marked scroll, outnumbering the ones on the stay scroll. How do we know these aren't doctored? Tsunade asked while Kaharu gave her a look, Danzo wouldn't stoop so low as to do that. Kaharu raised her voice while Danzo put his hand up, silencing the anger of the older woman. Kaharu, well I appreciate your faith. It appears that Lady Tsunade has grown an attachment to the boy, so much so it even seems like she's ready to ignore the concerns of the people to protect him. Admirable, I'll admit. Danzo said while Tsunade gave the man a death glare, she wanted nothing more than to wring his neck there and then, but Kaharu and Hamara kept their eyes on her. He was trying to make her look bad in front of them, he was manipulating their faith in her. With a few words and the names of the people, Danzo had turned every person in the room with her into an obstacle. Tsunade was silent for a few moments before she narrowed her eyes at Danzo, before putting her hand on the table pushing the scrolls. Naruto Uzumaki is a hero of the Hidden Leaf, not only as the container of the Kaiubi, but he has repeatedly sacrificed life and limb to protect his home, even though it despised him. During the Chunin exams let it be known that the one who defeated Shukaku the Ichibi was not Sasuke Chiha, but Naruto who bested the beast and protected the village from ruin. Tsunade said while Kaharu and Hamura's eyes widened, even Danzo raised an eyebrow at this. This information was hidden from the people in order to maintain peace as instructed by this very council, after the death of the third Hokage. Tsunade said while she stood up again looking toward Danzo. It goes public. Tsunade said while Hamura turned toward her, if the village discovers a tailed beast had attacked it would send them into a panic. Hamura said while Tsunade shook her head at the older man before she spoke. They will know that Naruto Uzumaki protected them, that he gave it his all to ensure they would live. This new year we are moving forward in will not be paved in hatred, Naruto's contributions should have him honored as hero not as a monster. Tsunade explained while Kaharu and Hamura looked toward the calm expression of the woman standing in front of them, she dared him. The blonde Hokage dared him with her eyes that were kept narrowed directly on him. The leaf village's shackles of loneliness and prejudice end with me. Tsunade said while Hamura and Kaharu were taken aback by the passion in the Hokage's voice, she seemed completely willing to bear that burden, despite still being so new to her position. As Danzo said, it was admirable. But. Hatred you bring up a good point. However you have to remember that hatred goes both ways, we call Jinchuriki containers, however their relationships are actually more complex than just that the Biju are sentient creatures after all. Danzo said while he stood from his seat, meeting Tsunade at her level while she glared at him, I'll ask you this do you remember what the last thing those who died remembered from the attack, better yet what those are left remember from the attack. Danzo said while Tsunade gritted her teeth while the man kept eye contact with her. The man riding the top of the Kaiubi as it completely destroyed everything in its path the minute it was unleashed. Danzo said while his hand reached into his sleeve pulling out pictures before he dropped them to the table without breaking eye contact with Tsunade, have you ever stopped to wonder, was Naruto Uzumaki ever truly alone? Danzo asked before Tsunade's eyes looked toward the pictures on the table in front of her. Her blood ran cold. It almost felt as if she was drained of strength while she took a look at the pictures before she trembled, the blonde Hokage slowly looked back toward Danzo, while Hamura and Kaharu looked at the pictures on the desk with horror. The pictures featured Shukaku from the Chunin exams, and his opponent was Naruto Uzumaki as Tsunade had said in her speech. Riding on the back of the Kaiubi. These these are fake. Tsunade tried to argue while her words fell on deaf ears, imagine being Naruto Uzumaki just for a moment, the village hates you for being a monster. No one to turn to at all, except for the monster sealed within his own body. Feeding him its hatred, his only friend, and it wants nothing more than to take vengeance on the leaf for sealing it away. Danzo said while Tsunade's mouth went dry. We have no idea what kind of things that the Kaiubi has said to the boy, but from what it looks like they may have the kind of relationship where they can work together. Two different forces, the same kind of hatred. Danzo said while Tsunade shook her head, that's ridiculous, Naruto wouldn't let hatred overtake him. Especially not from that monster. Tsunade raised her voice while Danzo gave her a look, his expression eerily calm. How do you know? Danzo asked while Tsunade gritted her teeth again, a shinobi long forgotten one said that hatred was born to protect love. His hatred may have been born to protect himself from the atrocities the villagers have committed against him. 
Danzo said while Hamura stood up. I am in agreement with Danzo, while the boy will be recognized for his efforts he should be banished from the village. His potential relationship with the Kaiubi makes him a massive threat to the safety of the village, if anybody would be close enough to conspire with the demon, it would be that boy. Amura said while Tsunade looked toward him while Kaharu stood up as well, this is the best punishment for a shinobi, the only other piece we could hope for the boy during exile is potentially his death, meaning we can be rid of the Kaiubi as well. Kaharu said while Tsunade stood back up. This monster is a monster of our own making. If the Leaf Village's hatred is the root of Naruto's own then as the Leaf it is up to us to end that vicious cycle. That boy is strong enough to face this. I know he is his heart as good hatred isn't going to make things better. Tsunade said her own voice beginning to choke up while Danzo gave her a look filled with pity, a Hokage does what is best for their village, not based on faith, but off of facts. In order to protect their families, to protect the people, to never have another child in the air again to witness a man riding a monster to bring them death, Danzo trailed off while Tsunade's breathing began to quicken. You know what must be done. Danzo said while Tsunade fell back into her seat while their gazes bore into her, if this proves to be too much for you then feel more than free to choose a successor who is more capable of carrying out such a hard decision. Danzo said while Tsunade glared at the man. He won completely. She hated it, she hated it so much. Tsunade stood up before she quickly turned back toward the door to exit the room, trying to calm herself, by the way, about the Chunin exams incident. Everything has already been made known to the public, it's not fair to keep information away from the villagers as you said. I do mean everything. Danzo said, placing emphasis on his last word. Tsunade leaned against the doorframe feeling weakened while it took everything in her not to tear the room apart. They were watching and it was what he wanted after all. With a broken heart, Tsunade left the room to make sure it was fully shattered to pieces. Current day. Naruto could feel the way that the looks of the villagers burned into him, as if he was a monster, just like it has always been if not worse, if he had to guess it must have had something to do with the latest issue of the newspaper that was delivered at the beginning of the week. The one that featured him on top of a transformed Gamabunta as the Kaiubi. Probably not the best decision looking back at it, not like he had a lot of choice in the heat of the moment. The flying rock pelted into the side of Naruto's head hard, while the boy slowly looked toward the direction where the rock came from to spot who threw it, while the blood from the new cut ran down his face past his cheek, a young boy kept his eyes glared at Naruto, while the blonde blinked. Naruto remembered himself as a little kid again, while the other kids back then pelted him with rocks on his birthday, as some kind of messed up tradition. Naruto clenched his eyes shut tightly as he walked, the glares from the villagers felt heavier and heavier, as Naruto walked before his walk became a run, and his running became jumps unfortunately for the blonde. He wouldn't ever be able to fly away from this pain. Naruto eventually made it back to his apartment or what used to be his apartment, he looked at the section of building he lived in noticing it had been vandalized to the surprise of no one. Naruto walked up to his room pushing the door open before meeting his escort. Yo. The gray-haired man greeted while Naruto's eyes widened, Kakashi-sensei Naruto said slowly, while the man walked toward the young blonde before Naruto turned away. Or should I just say Kakashi now? Naruto said sadly before he was suddenly taken into an embrace, Kakashi. Naruto said in a confused tone while the man hugged the blonde tightly. In all of his time knowing Kakashi he knew the man was never the overly affectionate type. I'm I'm so sorry. Kakashi apologized before Naruto felt himself tearing up before he hugged the man back, finally allowing himself to cry, while the gray-haired man held on to his student, his own wrath only being contained by his duty. I'll make sure you're safe all the way up until after you leave the gates, it's the least I can do. Kakashi said while Naruto nodded into his chest, the gray-haired jonin felt like a failure of a sensei holding his former student clothes. However in the eyes of the village he had been made into a monster all over again. And there was nothing he could do about it. So, I guess they destroyed pretty much everything right. Naruto said while Kakashi nodded his head the minute the news was announced. Hell probably even before I was assigned to escort you. Guess that's on me for being late again. Kakashi said while Naruto shook his head. Don't beat yourself up about it I'm not surprised. I'm a monster after all. Naruto said while Kakashi narrowed his eye, I don't believe that. Kakashi said while Naruto looked out the shattered window. They do. Naruto said while well, Kakashi went silent, I do have at least some good news. Kakashi said trying to lift the mood while Naruto raised an eyebrow, the gray-haired man revealed a small potted white-colored flower to the blonde, causing his eye to widen. This hearty little thing survived the onslaught, I like to think it means something, perhaps a good omen. Kakashi said while well, Naruto gingerly grabbed the potted flower before holding it close to him with all the care in the world. The flower brought back memories. The younger Naruto was walking back to his apartment after academy was over, the same glares he had always faced made contact with him. He tried his best to ignore them, but he never really could, there was one look that was odd to him. 
Hey, weirdo. The voice called out while Naruto stopped he turned toward the voice spotting short platinum blonde hair and bluish green eyes, the girl was holding a pot in her hand, with a small growing sprout in a dot. Um hello. Naruto said while the girl looked around before coming closer, great news, you've been picked to be my first customer. The girl exclaimed while Naruto tilted his head. Customer? Naruto asked while the girl nodded, yup. Ino Yamanaka from Yamanaka Flowers. When I grow up I'm going to work there and be the most beautiful ninja at the same time. Ino declared while Naruto just gave her a blank look. So why are you talking to me? If you're so great then why am I your first customer? Is it some kind of dangerous plant? Naruto asked cautiously while the girl huffed, no. Flowers are beautiful, not dangerous. Also you're my first customer because I just picked you randomly. Ino said while Naruto sighed. Nobody else wanted the flower huh? Yes he and it had that in common. Okay. Naruto said while Ino blinked at him, okay. Ino said while Naruto nodded his head. The flower, I'll take it. Naruto said digging into his pockets for Gama-chan while his fellow blonde just blinked at him. I my Don hey why are you crying? Naruto said while the other blonde was wiping her face with her free hand, you really want it? Ino asked while Naruto nodded. I do. Naruto said while Ino shook her head, here. Ino exclaimed, pushing the flower pot into his hands, while Naruto nearly dropped it. Oh wait I don't think I have enough to. Naruto was cut off by a finger being pushed against his lips, you get a weirdo discount just this once, next time I'm charging you double. Ino exclaimed again while Naruto sweat dropped. Double. Naruto yelled out before the two kids started laughing, take care of that flower, I worked hard on it weirdo. Ino yelled before she quickly ran off. Naruto reached out toward her, but she was out of reach, his attention went back to the little sprout, while Naruto teared up. Wasn't this kind of like a birthday present? Naruto held the pot in his hands in the current days while sighing in relief, he looked at the fully bloomed flower. Honestly it had bloomed multiple times, but Naruto made sure to take care of it, so it would keep blooming. He could hardly believe that something so precious survived, he was thankful. Akashi, I'm pretty sure there's nothing left here for me to take we gotta make a stop before I go. Naruto said while Kakashi nodded his head, wherever you want to go. Kakashi agreed while Naruto looked at his old apartment one more time, this place had always been a dump. However when he really thinks about it he grew up here. He was genuinely going to miss it. Let's go. Naruto said while Kakashi looked at his former student and nodded quietly before they departed, a cracked picture frame with Team 7 smiling in it, laid amongst the rest of the ruin Naruto once called his home. A little further ahead of Naruto's former home Kakashi stood by while Naruto approached the store doors, Yamanaka's flowers was red at the top of the building, while Naruto thought about opening the door, his hand stopped however. If she wasn't there then how was he supposed to give it back? Naruto looked at the door before he sighed, placing the potted flower beside the entrance, before he jogged back toward Kakashi who waited for him. Naruto lingered for a moment longer before he paired then began to walk away from the building, the petals of the white clover, swaying slightly at the breeze that had passed through it. A simple thank you was written on the pot. Kakashi looked out at the wilderness past the gate of the leaf village, he looked toward Naruto who walked toward the wilderness, wait. Kakashi said while Naruto stopped turning toward his former sensei. Naruto I was a pretty bad teacher. I should have been there for you all a bit more than I was, this is my fault in part. Kakashi said while Naruto looked at the jonin, Kakashi Naruto was cut off by another bag being thrown at him. The blonde caught the bag noticing the scrolls that were stuffed inside of it, his blue eyes blinked while Kakashi sighed. There are the necessities, food, water, and because I'm so nice there are even a few surprises that I'll let you find out for yourself in there I really wish there was more I could do for you, Naruto. If you end up hating me I won't even. The Kashi was cut off by a running hug from the blonde boy, stopping his sentence completely, you were a pretty crap teacher, Naruto said, while Kakashi chuckled while he hugged the boy back. I would never hate you though. Naruto said while Kakashi's eye widened at his words, Kakashi remembered himself being in a similar position once before. It was the time that Rin had died. No the time when he had killed her. The young Kakashi still covered in blood of his last teammate, stood outside of the gates of the leaf village, he didn't have the strength to take another step, instead he could only look toward his home in horror, unable to face himself for what he did. Standing at the gates was his own sensei who had his own somber look, while Kakashi stood there frozen, the blonde man approached Kakashi, while the grey-haired young man was ready for whatever punishment came his way. Instead he found himself surrounded by warmth. I could never hate you. Kakashi remembered those words, while his own voice trembled at the blonde holding on to him, what an awful irony. Naruto let go before he looked at his former teacher, hey tell Iruka and the others I'm sorry the blonde said while he turned around quickly, while Kakashi reached his hand out. His vision had seen both Abito and Rin running off along with Naruto away from him. The jonin was devastated. 
Yet again, another one slips out of his hands due to his own inability to change. Oddly enough Kakashi's thoughts went to the look on his own father's face, shortly before he would never see the man's eyes filled with life again. Was throwing aside duty that awful? Kakashi pondered to nobody but himself, as another name was added to his personal burdens, as the rain fell running across his cheeks. Perfect timing. It just had to rain. Right around the time Naruto needed a fire to keep himself warm and possibly cook a meal for himself, today just refused to be his day no matter what. Naruto quickly found himself a spot where he could stay as dry as possible, it was at this moment that it was all really starting to hit him. He really just lost everything. His friends. His teachers. His one opportunity to become somebody others could recognize. He supposed that this was the way it was supposed to be, he was just as bad as the demon within himself after all. Naruto was utterly alone. The blonde curled up into a bowl while the rain fell heavily around him, he felt himself sinking into that feeling, the one he always forced himself to ignore as a kid. It felt as if it was choking him, it was hard to breathe. Worthlessness. Everything he fought for, it was now so far out of reach. He couldn't become Hokage, there was no one to recognize him. No friends, no family. It was once again just him and the rain together again at his darkest hour. Should he just do them a favor and go away? Naruto hadn't had these kinds of thoughts since he was a young child, it was always like a dark hand gripping his shoulder trying to pull him down into its nothingness. Yet they would always come back. No matter how many believe it's he said when he was alone those thoughts became the strongest when he was reminded of what he was. If he died right here. Would they be happy? Naruto sat there just waiting for the rest of the world to swallow him up, so it could potentially end for him, at least, that could be the one thing that he could end up doing right for the leaf village to take out both himself and the Kaiubi. Naruto kept his eyes tightly shut, the rain was the only sound he heard until a familiar one rang, the sound of his stomach growling. It should be easy to ignore he was used to the being hungry part, so it'll go away eventually. Yet it persisted. Naruto deliberately tried to shut out the sound of his body begging him for food, if he waited and waited eventually his body would ask him for food again. Then it'll be over. You hungry? Your stomach is growling pretty loudly. I know a place that's got the best food ever. It's called Ichirakus, I'm telling you one good bite and you won't be hungry anymore. Really? Wanna find out? Name Zaruka by the way you got one? Naruto. Tears fell down Naruto's face while he held one of the scrolls in his hand, he found his body moving on autopilot. Naruto kept trying to put the scroll down, but he had already unlatched it, summoning forth the item stored within it. The scent was the first thing that hit him. Naruto's eyes widened while he stared at the steaming bowl of Ichiraku's ramen in front of him, it was a homely scent that filled his senses, almost breathing a new life into him. You wanna hear something crazy? There's a reason why your stomach growls when you're hungry. There is. I know how easy you might think it is to just disappear, but when all else fails your stomach is always your ally. Why? When your stomach growls it means you're hungry and when you're hungry you wanna eat. And when you wanna eat that means you wanna live. So eat up and live long Naruto. Naruto kept crying while he shoveled the ramen into his mouth while memories flooded his head, the times Aruka took to the ramen restaurant, usually after bad days, the times he dragged his team there to celebrate a mission completed, all the meetings he had with his friends, the rookie nine of the hidden leaf at the restaurant, the way him and Choji would race, Shikamaru would roll his eyes. Hibba laughed obnoxiously loudly, Ino would complain about the calories and the smiles from the old man and A.M. Was Naruto Uzumaki really alone? Naruto drank down the broth before he sighed, the rain had begun to slow down, while Naruto looked at the empty bowl, before he looked further into the expansive forest ahead of him. No set path ahead of him to follow. Naruto's eyes widened as he came to a realization. He could go anywhere. He could get stronger. He didn't want to die. Naruto slapped his own cheeks before he stood up looking into the forest, they were all waiting on him. He couldn't be recognized as a shinobi of the leaf anymore, but that doesn't mean that he no longer meant anything. He wanted to see them all again one day. While a large part of his life was spent all alone and by himself, he couldn't just forget about the bonds he created and the people who were waiting to see him again, especially the people who were waiting for him to do something with himself. Alright. You hearing this Kami I ain't dying yet. I've got friends now. I'm going to get stronger no matter what. I'm Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto yelled at the top of his lungs into the forest and open air to no one in particular, Naruto pounded a fist against his chest while he got ready to yell again. I'm going to live. Believe it. Naruto yelled, fully pushing back those thoughts that tried to drown them, the image of his team, as well as the rest of the friends filled his vision, while the blonde grinned as widely as he could, before he grabbed another scroll. The world was a big place. Filled with uncertainty and adversity. Yet. Naruto had the pleasure to have made friends all over the world, that meant there was only one thing he had to do. 
He had to go and visit them of course. Naruto tore into another piece of food while tears still fell from his eyes, but there was a grin on his face, he wasn't done yet. His stomach growled that meant he was hungry, and as long as he got hungry he was going to live no matter what. No matter what the road ahead of him had waiting for him, no matter who stood in his way. Naruto was more than ready to fight for his place in the world. Believe it. Chapter 2. Hello and goodbye. It was quiet. Normally this would have been a blessing for the young man currently laying on the roof, watching the clouds pass by in the sky, usually he would try to make out shapes that the clouds would make while lazing around. The boy could only reminisce about the times he had spent with another boy, who had been quite the loudmouth on a day similar to this one. Shoji? What's a shogi? Sounds tasty. No you idiot it's a game about strategy, you use a bunch of pieces with different roles to try to take the other side's king. Oh sounds complicated. It is but it's fun maybe. You're a weird guy, Shikamaru. You don't have to play if you don't want to. Sure, I'll play. Even if it's boring. I don't do it very often, but playing with friends is never boring. The shogi piece in his hand flipped into the air before the black-haired boy caught it as it fell back into his hand, he gripped the piece into his hand before he looked back up at the sky above a sad smirk on his face. You were the weird guy idiot. Shikamaru Nara said while he looked at the shogi piece in his hands, you just going to sit there and brood or are you going to say something? Shikamaru said before the sound of footsteps were heard approaching them. Shikamaru. The voice greeted in a calm tone while Shikamaru slowly turned to look toward the newcomer, Niji. Shikamaru greeted just as calmly while the Hayuga looked off to the side. I wanted to check on you. Niji said while Shikamaru raised an eyebrow at the other teen, how uncharacteristically caring of you. Shikamaru said facetiously while Niji resisted the urge to roll his eyes at the crassness of the black-haired teen. How's Hinata? Shikamaru asked while Niji walked over to sit beside the Chunin, devastated to say the least, it doesn't help that most of our family supports the decision. She still hasn't left her room since the official announcement. Niji explained while Shikamaru sighed. Figured, she didn't even get a chance to say anything to him. Shikamaru said while Niji looked toward the sky, none of us did. Niji said before the pair sat in silence for a few moments, both of their thoughts in a similar place in regard to the blonde idiot they called their friend. You mind if I say something crazy? Shikamaru said while Niji looked toward the black-haired teen, it wasn't your fault, you shouldn't blame yourself so heavily. We all made it back alive. Niji said while Shikamaru let out a heavy sigh from his mouth. It should have been me and you know it. I was the commanding ninja for the operation, the brunt of this should have been my burden. Not his. Shikamaru said while Niji shook his head, Naruto wouldn't want you to feel that way. Niji said while Shikamaru nodded his head. You're right, so I want. The crazy thing about this is if I wasn't the son of the Jonin commander or had a future spot on the Leaf Village's Great Families Council, then it would have been me walking out of those gates. Shikamaru said while well, Niji raised an eyebrow, you're saying this has something to do with Naruto's status. Niji asked while Shikamaru looked at the shogi piece he held in his hand before he gripped tightly. I'm saying that this entire thing had to have been deliberately made to target Naruto or else it wouldn't have made sense to go at him directly instead of at the one in charge. Shikamaru said while well, Niji's eyes widened slightly in surprise, you believe that this is part of some kind of plot to get rid of Naruto from the village? I doubt Lady Tsunade would have made a choice like this, they seemed close. Niji said while well, Shikamaru nodded. I agree, but there could be a chance that the decision wasn't just her own. There could be more people at play here with some kind of intent. Shikamaru said while well, Niji looked toward the ceiling tiles they were sitting on, that's a heavy accusation. Niji said before Shikamaru just nodded his head again. Yup. Shikamaru said while well, Niji looked toward him, well I can't say I can exactly disagree with you, I'm just wondering even if this was a scheme, what exactly would we be able to do? Niji asked while Shikamaru held up the shogi between their faces. I'm not trying to brag, but when it comes to shogi I've unfortunately been a prodigy in the game going nearly undefeated even against my father as of yet. Do you know who was the first person to ever beat me in the game? Shikamaru asked while Niji shrugged, perhaps your father finally gained the upper hand. Niji said inquisitively while Shikamaru merely chuckled at his dark-haired peer. Unbelievably it was Naruto the first time we had ever played when we were kids he had won a full set of three games against me, the kid hadn't even seen the game before, and he crushed me while I was teaching him, the so-called genius. Shikamaru recalled with a small smile on his face, while Niji's expression was filled with surprise at the boy's story. That had to be the first time I had ever put effort into anything, after he beat me I studied the game even more than I did before just to beat him. Once I did, I asked him how he was able to beat me before he surprised me. Shikamaru explained before Niji's eyes went to the piece in the black-haired teen's hands, the way he held it dearly had caught his eye. Naruto, he just pointed to this piece, the pawn. 
I used to just send those pieces out to gain an advantage as stereotypical as that is, yet he grinned pointing at the piece and just said they were cool. I told him they were just pawns, not much is cool about them. Shikamaru said with a shrug before he tossed up the piece before he caught it in his hands, again holding it out in front of the pair of boys, the same way he remembered a young Naruto holding the piece out to him in the past. Old pieces are important, even the pawns. Shikamaru said while Niji sighed, he was an important friend to you more than you let on. Niji said while Shikamaru held the piece in his hand that read pawn on it. Yeah, he's an idiot, but he has always had a good heart. I want to do whatever I can to make sure that Naruto is safe, hell maybe even find a way to bring him back home. All of my friends are important to me, I have him to thank for reminding me of that. Shikamaru said while Niji had the tiniest of smiles on his face looking at Shikamaru's uncharacteristically passionate face, the black-haired teen must have noticed that he was making the face because he quickly dropped it. I guess Naruto has a way to cause people to break their characters. I'm with you in trying to get to the bottom of this and hopefully bring Naruto back home it's too quiet around here. Niji stated while Shikamaru huffed, that's the understatement of the century, it looks like we've got our work cut out for us. I'm actually going to have to put in some effort again huh? What a drag Shikamaru expressed as usual though Niji knew that the boy's demeanor was different from his words, he was more than ready to do what it took. Hey. There you two are. The loud voice came from the other loud platinum blonde in the village, while Shikamaru and Niji turned their faces toward the landing blonde, along with a pink-haired girl who gave a simple wave with a look of confusion on her face. Have either of you seen Naruto around? Me and Ino have been looking around since we got back to the village, which is odd because you'd think we would have heard that idiot from a mile away. Sakura said while well, Ino took a step forward revealing a potted flower in her hand, I recognize this flower believe it or not, it's a little white clover I practically forced on him back in the day. I just found it with a cryptic thank you on it, now where's the idiot so I can give it back to him? Ino said while well, Shikamaru slowly looked toward Niji. Eyes. Sakura asked while Shikamaru broke into a sweat, he had completely forgotten that these two had been on a mission in the Land of Springs for the past week and half, along with Kurunai. They didn't even have the slightest clue. Geez and I told him no refunds either why are you two acting weird? Did he do something and you're both trying to cover for him? Now I get it, he left the flower because he obviously did some crazy prank and felt bad. Well he won't get away that easily. Ino yelled with a shake of her fist, while Sakura only felt the creeping sensation that something was very wrong crawling up her back, what happened to Naruto? Sakura asked with more of her concern leaking into her voice. Niji went to speak but was cut off by Shikamaru holding his hand up in front of him, probably due to the concern of Niji's lack of tact. The lazy boy cleared his throat and looked at the both of them with as collected of an expression as he could muster. Naruto as of three days ago is no longer a shinobi of the hidden leaf. Shikamaru broke the news before Sakura immediately slapped her hands against her mouth, her eyes widening, while Ino blinked at Shikamaru before she chuckled at her lazy teammate, her eyes went to the small flower in her hands. Hilarious, yet again Naruto's flair for the dramatic comes out. Geez he must be paying you guys a lot to act this well for a prank, tell him to come out and take this damn flower. Naruto. This isn't funny, don't just cryptically leave a product in front of my store. Ino yelled taking a couple of steps past Shikamaru, calling out to her fellow blonde trying to get her attention, Sakura looked toward Ino with a sad expression, she could hardly accept it herself, but her friend was expressing straight up denial. Ino. Sakura trailed off, she could tell immediately that Shikamaru was being serious. She herself was struggling to keep her composure from the news, guilt washed over her, because she could only think about the promise asked of him. Ino he's gone. Niji said while the girl stopped her pacing on the roof a little ahead of them, they saw her arms jerk slightly, nearly dropping the flower in her hands while looking at the expansive village. Not a single speck of orange to be found running around. Their thoughts lead back to the time her and Naruto were wearing kimonos looking out into the night sky after a successful mission, she had bugged them to relax while her fellow blonde was as gung-ho as always about getting home. They eventually caved, and the two of them found a nice little spot to moon bathe, she remembers calling it, there wasn't anything too massive that happened while they were both there in that moment. She remembered the earnest look in his eyes. She remembered when they laughed their asses off at their whole fiasco of a mission, turns out the prince liked chubby women the whole time, and basically all of their efforts meant nothing in the end to their success. She doesn't remember when she started noticing, but Naruto laughed with his heart instead of his mouth when something made him really laugh. The tear ran down Ino's face, while the flower in her hands gently swayed in the wind, while her ponytail danced on the back of her head. I just remembered I don't think I ever told you what this flower meant, huh Naruto? Ino lamented to the wind while the rest of the teens on the roof silently joined her, all of their thoughts all on the same orange-clad individual. Turns out you really don't know what you have. Until it's gone. 
The sound of Jetta's sandals clacking echoed through the hallway toward the entrance of the Hokage's office, a white-haired man's eyes narrowed as he took each step toward the door. The door quickly swung open revealing Jiraiya the Gallant, one of the three great San and untoed sage of Mount Mayaboku, with a visibly upset look on his face as he faced his old friend at her desk. Ah Jiraiya, you're later than I thought you'd be. Tsunade responded calmly while Jiraiya wordlessly slammed a scroll on her desk, the scroll read contract on it, while the woman looked toward it. You mind explaining why on the day I came to retrieve Naruto and start his training journey, I was immediately summoned to end his contract with the toads of Mount Mayaboku. Jiraiya asked with a slight growl in his voice before Tsunade looked toward her old friend with a serious expression. The toads are aligned with the leaf village, Naruto was banished from the village, therefore making his contract with them null. Make it quick. Tsunade said before she went to stamp another piece of paper before Jiraiya slammed his hand on the desk gruffly. Why? Jiraiya asked while Tsunade looked back up from her paperwork, the failure of the Sasuke retrieval mission, his involvement with the Kaiubi Tsunade said, listing off the reasons before Jiraiya growled. Are you hearing yourself right now Naruto wasn't in the wrong for any of that, you know that just as well as I do. Jiraiya raised his voice while Tsunade glared at the white-haired man, lower your tone. I'm the Hokage of the Hidden Leaf. Old friend or not you will not raise your voice at me. Tsunade said in a threatening tone while Jiraiya sighed before quickly looking around. Where's Shizune? Jiraiya asked while Tsunade looked back toward her old teammate, I sent her on an errand. Tsunade responded while Jiraiya sighed. Good, we can speak candidly. Now what happened? Jiraiya said while Tsunade pushed her paperwork to the side, the council had met in regard to Naruto. It had been decided there that he would no longer be a shinobi of the Hidden Leaf and be banished from the village. Tsunade said while Jiraiya raised an eyebrow. Those old bastards. You never agreed with them on anything, why didn't you just ignore them? Jiraiya asked while Tsunade huffed, you honestly believe it's that simple? Like I could just constantly ignore the voices of the people all I want. Tsunade said while Jiraiya's expression softened. What did they say? What did they threaten him with? Why was it that you decided to agree with them on something like this? Jiraiya fired away questions while Tsunade's fist clenched, did you know that even after everything he's done nearly 70% of all of Kanaha wanted him gone? Tsunade asked while Jiraiya took a step back in surprise. Even a few of the great families agreed with the decision to get rid of Naruto, hell the Hyuga were nearly adamant about it. Even Shikaku, the Jonin commander, said it was for the best if Naruto wasn't around, I never realized how deep the scars from that day ran through them. Tsunade said while Jiraiya gritted his teeth, he saved them and wanted to protect them. He cared about them and they just threw him away. Jiraiya asked while Tsunade closed her eyes. The blonde Hokage focused too before she respawned to the white-haired man, the scars of the leaf when it comes to the Kaiubi run extremely deep, to ignore those scars as the Hokage would be a massive disservice to them. Tsunade said while Jiraiya pointed his finger toward her. That wasn't on him either. Minato wanted Naruto to be treated like a hero. He's not a monster, he deserved the chance to prove them wrong. Jiraiya passionately exclaimed while a heavy slam of a fist caused him to stagger, you think I don't know that do you think that any part of me enjoyed doing this? What the hell would you have had me do? Tsunade yelled while Jiraiya looked at the blonde. But what the hell was I supposed to do? Tsunade trailed off while she began to tremble, Jiraiya's eyes widened as he looked at the blonde Hokage before he took a breath and weaved a hand sign. Release. Jiraiya said before Tsunade's eyes widened before they relaxed her very image in front of the white-haired San and began to fade. Slowly the room itself had begun to change, the desk once pristine looking had been heavily damaged, pieces of a chair had been scattered on the floor, and paperwork one neatly stacked on the desk littered the ground. Jiraiya slowly turned to the sound of a quiet sob, spotting his old friend, the real one, not the Jinjutsu she had put up. His heart sank when he saw her, the normally strong and proud woman he had come to know throughout his life. She looked so defeated. Tsunade had a presumably empty sake bottle next to her while she sat up on the floor, her back against the wall her knuckles slightly bloodied. Damn I should have figured you'd see through it. Tsunade said with a crass chuckle before Jiraiya quickly went to her side crouching in front of her. Tsunade. Jiraiya said while the blonde woman kept her eyes to the floor, a hokage does what's best for their people no matter what. Tsunade uttered almost wanting to spit after saying the words. Naruto he was so good. A heart like that only to be treated like garbage, he didn't deserve this. Yet I couldn't do a damn thing. Tsunade said while Jiraiya sighed, is there a way to bring him back? to make the banishment null. Jiraiya asked while Tsunade shook her head. Even if there was Danzo has the village turned against him. With a simple damn picture. Tsunade said grimly while Jiraiya narrowed his eyes, Danzo that bastard. Jiraiya said, getting up before turning toward the door. The hell are you doing? Tsunade asked while Jiraiya turned back toward the blonde, something has to be done about that bastard before it's too late. Jiraiya growled before Tsunade shook her head. And then what? 
make yourself an enemy of the village. Tsunade said while Jiraiya clenched his fist, I'd gladly do it for what he did to Naruto. A village that hates him, the same village he and his father protected the place his mother called home. That's no place I'd want to be involved with anyway. Jiraiya said while Tsunade gave him a look. Jiraiya, they're scared. They're angry. Naruto's just a kid, but after what a lot of them had lost I can see why they act the way they do. Tsunade explained while Jiraiya thought back to the incident itself, the entire world practically shakes at just the mention of the attack at the Leaf Village. I just wish that they would have given him the chance. Tsunade trailed off while Jiraiya huffed, this isn't what Sensei would have wanted Jiraiya said, while Tsunade's brown eye gleamed. Well the third Hokage didn't do a very good job of preventing that, did he? Tsunade raised her voice, tossing the empty sake bottle at the wall, causing it to shatter, before the two San and sat in silence. They both silently mourned their departed teacher for a moment. This was planned out carefully, Danzo used Naruto as an enemy to gain more favor with the village if they hated Naruto, then he could unite the leaf under that hatred. I have zero doubts that he's probably going to use this as an opportunity to try to forcefully become Hokage. Tsunade explained while Jiraiya pointed back at the door, all the more reason to do something now, I can understand the strategy of using Naruto as a source of hatred, but he's a Jinchuriki. Wouldn't it be better to keep him around as a deterrent from other hidden villages from attacking? Jiraiya theorized while Tsunade looked up toward her old friend. We can't control him. Tsunade said, causing Jiraiya to pause, knowing Danzo he probably thought the same exact thing at one point, however he can't control Naruto. A Jinchuriki that won't bend the knee is nothing more than a threat to him. Tsunade explained while Jiraiya gave her a slightly puzzled look. So sending him out into the world is a better solution. He's got to be planning something involving Naruto worst case something involving the Akatsuki. Jiraiya said while Tsunade's eyes slowly widened, we have no proof right now, a baseless assumption would only make things worse. Tsunade said while Jiraiya reluctantly agreed. This is my fault Tsunade I take full responsibility for all of this. Jiraiya said while Tsunade looked toward her friend, how is this your fault? I was the one who caved, it's even worse because deep down I thought I would be protecting him from the rest of the village's hatred by sending him away, Tsunade explained, while Jiraiya shook his head. I was the one who put you in this position, Sensei asked me to be the Hokage first, and I turned it down not to mention even after his death I turned it down again. If I had become Hokage instead of shoving the burden onto you. Jiraiya said while well, Tsunade kept silent, however, I believe in you. I always have so I don't regret going out to find you, you are what's best for this village right now way better than me. Jiraiya said while Tsunade huffed. Still nothing to blame yourself for you idiot. Tsunade said while Jiraiya shook his head, I blame myself because I was made as godfather, I swore to protect him and be there for him every step of the way. Yet, I left him to be lonely, so I can't fault Sensei for a sin I made myself. Jiraiya explained while Tsunade's eyes softened looking at the white-haired man. Naruto scared me too honestly not because of the Kaiubi, or even because I blamed him for anything with the leaf I just couldn't bear to see myself mess up his life, I didn't think I was fit to be a father figure. Jiraiya said while well, Tsunade felt her eyes watering again, Jiraiya. Tsunade said while well, the other San and put his hand up. I was wrong, just like Minato said I would be now I've got to take responsibility for that. Jiraiya said while well, walking over to Tsunade helping her off the ground while the woman trembled slightly. Tsunade. Jiraiya said before the blonde woman met her old friend with eye contact, before he gave her a slight grin. I'm going to get him back. Jiraiya said while well, Tsunade blinked away her forming tears before she hugged the man in front of her tightly. Jiraiya promise me promise me you'll keep him safe. Tsunade said while well, Jiraiya hugged his old friend back just as tightly before he nodded his head. On my life. He will be safe. Jiraiya said before he released Tsunade from his embrace, he then walked toward the damaged desk where the scroll sat on a still solid part of it. Null. Jiraiya said weaving a hand sign before pointing his palm at the contract causing it to burn. Jiraiya, are you sure? Tsunade asked while the white-haired San and watched the scroll burn in front of him, this road is going to be extremely hard for Naruto, but believe it or not, I have nothing but faith in him. If anyone will be able to survive the world it'll be him I'll iron out the rest of the details once I find him Jiraiya said, while Tsunade cracked a tiny smile at the man. He still has your necklace right? Jiraiya asked while Tsunade nodded, of course. The blonde said while well, Jiraiya nodded his head. Good, that should at least make it a little easier to track him down. Before that I have to make one more stop. Jiraiya said while well, Tsunade tilted her head slightly confused, a stop. Tsunade asked while well, Jiraiya took a look toward the crooked picture of Minato Namikas on the wall of the office. Naruto is owed something. Jiraiya said before he walked toward the door, stopping briefly to turn toward the blonde Hokage. Tsunade you're the strongest person I know. It's okay to be weak sometimes, you don't have to hide it from me at least. 
Jiraiya said while Tsunade looked down at her fist before she relaxed it looking back up toward her friend. Right. Tsunade said while Jiraiya gave her a grin, don't worry about Naruto and don't beat yourself up. We gotta get back at that Danzo so I need you in top shape. Jiraiya said, giving a thumbs up. Who are you trying to give me orders? Tsunade said with a chuckle while Jiraiya chuckled as well, turning to leave the room before Tsunade stopped him. Thank you. Tsunade said while Jiraiya wordlessly nodded the grin, never leaving his face as he exited the room. Tsunade turned toward the window looking at the rest of the village, she could practically still see Naruto jumping from roof to roof to her office looking for a mission. Naruto are you still okay out there? The tree branch shook while a figure flew through the air before landing on another branch. Naruto was jumping from tree to tree quickly, the wind blowing past his whisker-like marks on his cheeks while he grinned. From what he could remember he was almost at the docks, there he would take a boat to his first stop on his world tour. The Land of Waves. Naruto flipped to the next branch before flipping to another one perching on it like a bird before he took a breath. The boy was a little dirt covered and his orange jacket that he held so dearly was in tatters covering his body. The last five or so days in the forest had been a bit of a pain, he ran out of food scrolls on day three. Damn his metabolism. However the good news about it was the blonde had gotten better at hunting, if you could call better a few squirrels and an overly ambitious raccoon. Food was food so he felt proud he was able to catch those things if anything, Naruto pulled out a piece of squirrel jerky he made quickly eating it. Still not at your raccoons but not too bad if I say so myself. Naruto said cheerfully before he took a look at his ruined map, Kakashi had also packed up for him in the bag. So, uh. I think the docks are left from here Naruto said slightly confused before he looked back up, spotting nothing but trees in front of him. Ugh. Stupid map. Left. Right. There's nothing but freaking trees. How the hell am I supposed to find anything like this? Naruto whined loudly before he sat on the branch crisscross before he rubbed his chin in a thinking pose. Come on think, there's gotta be a better way to navigate think about what Kakashi sensei taught Naruto tried to think, but only remembered Kakashi giggling to himself while turning the pages to his pervy book while they swayed through the water. Well that doesn't help what about pervy sage? Naruto exclaimed while he tried to remember his trip to get Tsunade with the white haired man. Remember Naruto when approaching a good angle one must use all five senses. Hiraya explained while he was tiptoeing with Naruto following behind. Sight. The man said while looking around, touch. Jiraiya said before running his finger on the cobblestone. Hearing hush. Jiraiya said while Naruto gave his mentor a look of pure astonishment mixed with confusion, while the sounds of water splashing were heard by the two males. Ah smell. Jiraiya said while he started to smell the air, Naruto just blinked before the sand and nudged him. Come on boy smell. Jiraiya urged while Naruto sweat dropped, this seems like this for something gross. Naruto said while he reluctantly smelled the air. To his surprise he was able to smell something clearly, the scent was sweet like flowers, but it was also warm and damp. I can smell it pervy sage. Naruto cheered before Jiraiya narrowed his eyes at the boy, quiet. You're going to get us caught. Jiraiya said in a hushed yell before he licked his finger. Taste. Jiraiya said before he placed his finger on the fence before he put it back into his mouth. Mahogany perfect. Jiraiya suddenly jumped causing Naruto to jump after him before the both landed on a rooftop. So did we find it whatever it is, it smells awesome. Naruto exclaimed while Jiraiya chuckled before he turned Naruto's head. Behold, the forbidden treasures of man. Jiraiya said before Naruto noticed the splashing of the women's bath before Naruto quickly glared at his giggling mentor. I should have known, you giant pervert. Naruto yelled while Jiraiya huffed before pointing to himself. I'm a super pervert, remember? Jiraiya yelled before an empty bucket slammed against the side of this head. The memory ended with Naruto remembering the both of them having to run for their lives. The only thing I realized was that all of my sensei so far have been massive perverts. Naruto yelled exasperated before he stood up causing the branch he was on to shake from his sudden movement. The leaves brushed against each other, making a sound before Naruto's eyes slowly widened at the leaves. Wait a minute. Naruto said before he thought back to the first time he and his team made the trip to the land of waves. The boat made a slushing sound while it cut across the water, Naruto thought harder about how it looked. Naruto closed his eyes before listening to the area surrounding him, he could hear the leaves dancing around him. He smelled the air with a deep inhale before he caught it, Naruto's blue eyes opened before he looked toward a direction. Salty. Naruto suddenly yelled out before he dashed toward the scent as it got stronger, he always had pretty good senses his entire life, but he never thought he would use them like this. Naruto bounced from tree to tree while following the scent, thank you pervy sage and Kakashi. Naruto yelled while he flew through the air again. Suddenly an image of Kiba making a stupid looking face popped into his head, well, I guess you two Kiba Naruto trailed off before he kept his rush going. 
The scent was becoming so strong to him that he could feel it burning his nose, the trees were starting to recede, meaning he was getting close to something. Naruto picked up his pace moving quickly through the trees before after one more jump he broke through the tree line into a clearing, and right in front of him was water and a lot of it. The docks. Naruto yelled before he landed kissing the grass in front of him before he rolled around in it. Finally. I'm out of the freaking woods. Take that mother nature, you can't beat Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto yelled before he chuckled, I gotta find a boat. The boy said to himself before he had gotten off the ground walking toward the rest of the docks. Is that Naruto? One of the men at the dock said while another one rolled his eyes, haha very funny, you know he lives at the leaf village. We get your bored man but don't play pretend. One of the other men said before the spotter shook his head and pointed. The blonde haired kid looked around with confusion while the other man at the dock's eyes widened at the sight. Holy shit. That is Naruto. The man said while Naruto walked along the dock scratching his head, last time they came here Kakashi spoke to them. Was there a specific one he was supposed to pick? Maybe some kind of secret boat code? Excuse me, are you Naruto Uzumaki? The sudden voice asked, causing Naruto to jump, uh yeah. What's it to you? Naruto asked cautiously while the man chuckled. It really is you, hey do you need a ride into the village? The man offered while Naruto blinked at him, he did need a boat, and this guy seemed to be kind. Sir Naruto was cut off by the man in front of him being drop kicked by another one of the ferrymen. Mr. Naruto, take my ferry. The man yelled before the other ferryman got into the fray, all of them fighting over who was going to take Naruto into the village. Naruto watched the carnage in front of him, not sure whether to feel bashful or just bad at the display. I guess Team 7 is famous around here after our mission. Naruto thought to himself before he went to break up the fight, the sight of an older ferryman calmly sitting in his boat motioning for Naruto to come over. Naruto looked between him and the crowd of ferrymen fighting before he walked over to the older man. Long time no see Naruto, you're a lot more popular than you were last time huh? The older man joked while Naruto recognized him from their first trip, hey you're the old guy from the last time. Naruto exclaimed while the man nodded. Hop in. The older man said before Naruto grinned getting into the boat, the ferryman set sail, while Naruto looked around at the water gently being pushed by the boat. The trip was brief, but eventually Naruto was brought to the path he had to take before, he gave the old ferryman a wave before he dashed into the wilderness again. It was a lot foggier last time he came here with Team 7, but this time he was able to see how pretty this place really was. The sun shined on the water, and the grass was a healthy green, Naruto grinned while he passed by landmarks. When he really thought about it he never did really take a look at the land around him and really take it in. Was this what freedom was like? Sure being banished from the village was painful, and potentially not being able to see his friends again did still bother him, he couldn't help but enjoy the sensation of freely being able to go where he wanted. There was no one to call him a demon or anyone he had to tiptoe past to go somewhere other than his home. It felt. Nice. The boy skidded to a stop when he noticed the massive bridge now in front of him, so the old man finished it huh? Naruto said with amazement and a sense of pride before he took a step on it. As he walked along the bridge memories rushed into his sight, the fight they had with Zabuza and Haku, saving Sasuke, Zabuza fighting off Gato and his men. His first mission. He spotted a figure crouched on the side of the bridge, placing flowers on a certain section, before it got up and bowed. Boy. Hate to interrupt, but do you know where old man Tazuna lives? Naruto yelled over causing the figure to look toward the boy, the figure paused before she started rushing toward the blonde boy. She had long dark blue hair and dark eyes, the smile on her face grew before Naruto recognized the woman. Tsunami. Naruto. The woman called out to the boy, while Naruto slowly smiled looking at Tsunami approaching him. He grinned before he pointed a thumb toward him. The one and only. It's been a really long time since we've seen you, Naruto. Tsunami exclaimed while the blonde-haired boy closed his eyes in the warm embrace of the dark-haired woman. Yeah it has. It's nice to see you again. Naruto said back while Tsunami took a step back from the boy taking in his features before she smiled. You even got a little taller since the last time. Tsunami said with a chuckle while Naruto scratched the back of his head with a bashful grin. Oh really? Heh, guess I have huh? Naruto said while Tsunami chuckled, Inari would love to see you too, did you plan on entering the village? Tsunami asked while Naruto nodded. Of course, I'd love to see Inari too and the old man. Naruto said excitedly while Tsunami smiled, good, I'll bring you to the house so you can see everyone. Tsunami said while Naruto nodded. The pair began to walk down the bridge, while Naruto raised an eyebrow at a pile of flowers and candles on a spot on the side of the bridge. Hey Tsunami. What's with the flowers? Naruto asked while Tsunami looked toward them, those flowers are for two shinobi who died on this bridge Tsunami said, while Naruto's eyes widened. 
Those two shinobi the blonde boy immediately remembered the faces of Haku and Zabuza as they laid on the bridge slowly dying. Naruto's face adopted a somber look while the pair stepped closer to the pile of flowers where a headband and a broken mask laid. You may find it a bit strange that myself of all people would bring flowers for the pair of ninjas hired to kill my grandfather. Tsunami said while Naruto looked toward the gentle smile the woman had on her face, however, they were also the same two shinobi who got rid of Gadu and his gang, allowing peace to come to my home and my grandfather to finish his bridge, so I have always thanked them since then. Tsunami said while Naruto looked back at the tribute in front of him. The blonde suddenly clapped his hands together, squeezing his eyes shut with a slight bow. Sorry I didn't bring any flowers but thanks and it's good to see you too. Naruto said speaking to the two souls of the ninja he once had to face in battle, one being someone who he considered a friend and the other being someone who he could respect in his very last moments, he spent trying to protect the one important to him. Tsunami smiled gently at Naruto, let's get back before it gets too late. The dark-haired woman said while the blonde ninja nodded his head. Right. Naruto said before continuing to follow the dark-haired woman, the pair kept walking until Naruto noticed a sign they were passing up. The great Naruto bridge that's a weird name wait a minute isn't that my name. Naruto suddenly yelled while Tsunami turned toward him, oh you didn't know. The bridge was named after you, we've been walking on it the whole time. Tsunami said while Naruto continued to freak out. Wait but why me I'm pretty sure Kakashi did the most work out of all of us. There was also Sasuke and Sakura. Shouldn't it be the great Team 7 bridge or something? Naruto yelled while Tsunami chuckled before she looked around, speaking of your team, where are they? I would've figured they would be with you. Tsunami said while Naruto deflated slightly. Well. Naruto trailed off while Tsunami shook her head, you don't have to force yourself, let's keep going. Tsunami said while she walked forward with Naruto following behind. Eventually the pair made it to Tsunami's home, the woman walked in while Naruto gawked at the size of the house, it was definitely way bigger than the one he had seen last time. Inari. I'm home. Tsunami called out while Naruto stepped in behind her, this was definitely not the same house that he had seen before. Welcome back mom, did you need any Naruto Inari called out, breaking the blonde from his stupor before he looked toward the smaller boy. Inari. Also of course it's me. Naruto called out while the younger boy tackled Naruto into a hug that the blonde boy reciprocated. It's really you. Why didn't you send a letter or something? Inari asked while the blonde boy scratched the back of his head with his catch for fox-like grin. You know me, I'm the number one most unpredictable. Naruto trailed off while Tsunami gave him a look. Yeah, you are pretty reckless. Inari snidely commented while Naruto fumed at the boy. I'll go get dinner started, why don't you two go grab father? Tsunami asked in a sweet tone, while the two boys in front of her gave her a salute yes ma'am. They both said at the same time before Inari started guiding the older blonde to an office space. Grandpa. Look who it is. Inari called into a room where a slumbering old man sat at a desk covered in paperwork, the old man suddenly jumped up at the sound of the yell. I wasn't sleeping. Wait a minute Inari what are you making all that racket for? The old man complained before he adjusted the glasses on his face, well as I live and breathe, if it isn't Naruto. The old man said cheerfully while Naruto grinned. That's right, old man Tazuna. I'm here to visit. Naruto called out while Tazuna grinned, well you're always welcome in our home, sorry for the mess usually I'm more organized than this. Tazuna apologized while Naruto shook his head. It's totally cool old man, what's up with all the papers anyway? Naruto asked while Inari perked up, grandpa's the mayor of the whole village. The boy said in a bragging tone while Naruto's jaw nearly dropped. The mayor. Naruto called out in surprise while Tazuna shook his head, I'm only acting as leadership while the actual mayor is out of the village for a conference. Tazuna explained while Naruto slowly nodded his head. Oh that makes sense I guess. The blonde said not really understanding while Tazuna laughed, it's good to see you haven't changed at all. Tazuna exclaimed while Naruto grinned. Dinner's gonna be ready soon, let's go to the dining room. Inari said excitedly while Tazuna nodded, let's go, you hungry Naruto. Tazuna asked while Naruto nodded. Always. The boy said while the trio made their way to the kitchen where Tsunami was moving her way through with ease and grace. The sound of chopsticks being pulled apart ran through the kitchen while Naruto took in the scent of the hot pot in front of him. Thanks for the food. Naruto cheered while the rest of the family smiled toward him before they copied his gesture. The taste of broth, mustard spinach, pork and mushrooms graced Naruto's grateful taste buds while the boy ate heartily. Boy, Tsunami this is amazing. Naruto complimented while Tsunami gave him a smile, I'm glad you like it. The dark-haired woman said while Inari nodded his head with pride. Mom's cooking is always the best. The boy said simply before he proceeded to copy Naruto's bigger in me leading, Tazuna took a sip of his tea before he looked toward Naruto. Hey so on Naruto where's the rest of your. 
Azuna started but was cut off by Tsunami purposely bumped the table, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get comfortable have you told Naruto about the bridge yet? Tsunami asked while Naruto looked up from his food. Yeah. Hey old man, what's the big idea with naming the bridge after me? Naruto asked while Tazuna chuckled, honestly because you were a big part as to why I even got to finish it, not to mention I hope the bridge takes some of your traits as well. Tazuna explained while Naruto raised an eyebrow. Traits. Like what, the bridge is going to turn blonde or something. Naruto asked while Tazuna shook his head while chuckling at the naive boy sitting diagonally from him at the table. I hope that like you that the bridge is able to stay strong and sturdy, no matter what comes its way. Tazuna said while Naruto's expression softened while looking toward the older grinning man reminiscing about the events of the bridge. It's a bridge that will never give up. Tazuna said while the blonde boy smiled a little, hey so where's the rest of your team? Inari quickly asked before Tsunami shot a look toward him. If Naruto doesn't want to talk about it he doesn't have to. Tsunami said with a slight stern tone in her voice before she looked back toward the downtrodden Naruto while Tazuna frowned slightly. Honestly I wanted to know as well. Azuna said while well, Tsunami gave her father a look, Father Tsunami was cut off by Naruto shaking his head. It's fine it's a little hard to explain, but I'm no longer a ninja of the hidden leaf. I was banished. Naruto said before Tazuna slammed a fist on the table, banished. On what grounds? Tazuna asked angrily while Tsunami covered her with her hand. Inari raised an eyebrow at the blonde. Banished. Like they kicked you out. Why? Inari asked while Naruto shrugged in response. S I just wasn't good enough I screwed up big time and let Sasuke run away it's cause I was weak. Naruto said while Tazuna seethed in his seat, father, calm down. Tsunami said while the old man huffed. Naruto, you're one of the best ninja we've ever had the pleasure of working with. I'm calling bull on the leaf's decision. Tazuna raised his voice while Naruto looked toward his plate again, it makes sense to me I failed to bring him back. I gave it everything I had, but I still couldn't save him, Naruto said while Tazuna gave the boy a sad expression. The village pretty much hates me again because of the whole fox situation at the Chunin exams, maybe it's a good thing I'm gone you know. Naruto said while Tsunami frowned, I almost forgot I'm acting leader for the land of waves. I'm gonna head to the village and give them a piece of my mind. Tazuna said while Naruto slapped his chopsticks on the table. You don't have to do that it kind of hurts, but I can't hate them for that. I'm sure at least my friends don't hate me. I have to keep moving forward no matter what. Naruto said while the family looked at the boy with surprise, that basically makes you homeless though, over a bunch of crap. Everyone makes mistakes, you shouldn't have been punished like this, so what are you going to do now? Tazuna said while Naruto just blinked, not having a response. I don't know. Right now I'm just planning to travel around and see my friends from all over, but I'm not really sure. I can't become Hokage anymore. Naruto said while Tsunami looked toward her father, I think that's perfectly okay. Tsunami said while Naruto looked toward the woman. Not having dreams doesn't automatically make you worthless, you're still young. You have plenty of time to figure out what you want to have as a dream. Tsunami said reassuringly to Naruto, really? Naruto asked while Tsunami nodded her head sweetly at the blonde. Of course, the most important part is to have fun and enjoy the journey. Tsunami said before she looked toward her father again, Tazuna caught on to his daughter's look, raising an eyebrow. Enjoy the journey huh? I can still get stronger and I can probably see a bunch of cool places too. Naruto said slowly becoming excited while Inari smiled, yeah, you could be like some super cool adventure. Inari exclaimed while Naruto shook his head. Yeah. Like I said, I'm not giving up. That's my ninja way. I'm going to become super strong and help people while I'm doing it. Naruto yelled out while Tsunami was motioning her head toward the blonde, causing Tazuna to squint his eyes before he realized what his daughter was getting at. Oi, Naruto. Traveling is pretty expensive, you'll need some money in order to properly survive out there. Azuna said while well, Naruto's eyes widened slightly, crap, you're right and I'm pretty much broke right now Naruto said, patting his deflated Gamachan resting in his back pocket. Azuna grinned while Tsunami smiled at her father, if you're willing then I think I've got just the thing for you, you see the village is in need of plenty of help and having a ninja at the ready would be helpful. Tazuna said while well, Naruto's eyes widened. Are you being serious old man? Naruto said while well, Tazuna nodded his head, of course, Naruto we're more than thankful for everything you've done for us. If a job is all you need then that's more than easy. Tazuna said while Naruto grinned. I accept. So when should I get started? Naruto asked eagerly while Tsunami giggled, let's do something about those clothes first. Tsunami said while Naruto looked down at his tattered clothes. His jacket was still shredded and his pants weren't faring all that better. Alright. Naruto said bashfully while the family laughed at him, they continued to speak through dinner until everything was finished and plates were cleaned. 
Naruto stood in front of a small house surrounded by its own little patch of green healthy looking grass, with his old clothes bundled up in his hands. The blonde was now wearing a black t-shirt with a red whirlpool on the back of it, paired with dark green cargo shorts. His old jacket and pants were tucked safely in his arms, Tazuna looked at the boy before patting a hand on his shoulder. I wish we could have gotten you something bigger, but this is the only house we had that was free. Look comfy. Azuna said while the blonde gawked at the house, this place was way bigger than his apartment back at the Hidden Leaf. Naruto couldn't even begin to comprehend what he was supposed to with all of the space he had. Definitely, so I can seriously live here? Naruto asked while Tazuna nodded, yup, this place is all yours as long as you need it. Tazuna said while Naruto blinked. This might be a little too nice. Naruto said while Tazuna raised an eyebrow at the boy, if this was nice to him, then he would have hated to see where he lived before. Anyway, it's getting late so I'll be heading back home. Be at my office first thing in the morning for your job assignments, and we'll do our best together. Azuna said while Naruto grinned, thanks old man. I'll be there. Believe it. Naruto said giving a thumbs up while Tazuna smiled back at him. Get some rest Naruto. Good night. The man called out while walking away, good night. Naruto yelled back before the blonde turned back toward his new home. He went to step inside, but hesitated when he looked at the bundle of clothes in his arms, Naruto then walked toward the backyard of his new home. Shortly afterward the boy had made a little fire pit taking one last good look at his old jacket and pants before he sighed. This kind of feels like a goodbye I think I don't really like goodbyes huh? Naruto said to himself while the fire crackled in front of him, the boy had fond memories with the clothing, but they were torn to shreds. He took a deep breath before he gently placed the clothing into the fire, before he slapped his hands together. Chanting a quiet thank you as he closed a chapter of his life to begin a brand new unknown one. His old jacket and pants burned slowly in the fire while Naruto sat silently, as if he was hosting a mini funeral for the articles of clothing, he wouldn't stand up and go inside again until they had completely turned to ashes. The interior of the little house was clean and neat, it was one large room with a bed set beside a high window, allowing the moonlight to peek through the blinds illuminating the room. Two smaller rooms were connected to the large room one being a bathroom and the other being storage or a closet of some sort. Whatever it was, Naruto was grateful. His time as a leaf shinobi had ended, but he was still alive, and as long as he was he couldn't allow himself to give up, he wanted to find out what his new dream could be. He wanted to explore and see his friends all over the world. For now however he had work starting in the morning. So the blonde settled in for the night thinking about his friends back at the leaf village, who he had hoped still thought about him, even if it was a tiny bit. I'll keep doing my best guys. Believe it. Chapter 3. The Comeback Kid. 2 palms. 4 palms. 8 palms. 16 palms. The sounds of wood being smashed reverberated through the halls of the Hyuga compound, while Kiba Inuzuka flinched slightly at the sounds that he could even hear from outside of it, he figured that Niji would be training, but he's never heard him like this. It made him a little nervous. His original purpose was to come and check in on Hinata, but the blows he was hearing sounded frustrated, and the last thing he wanted was to run into an angry Niji, leading to his pause at the front of the entrance of the compound. The brown-haired boy took a breath before his hand wavered from knocking again, ugh, damn Shino, leaving me to do this alone. Kiba complained while he ran his hand through his hair before he looked at the entrance again. Akamaru, his most trusted ally also happened to also be busy, he and the rest of the younger dogs were getting bathed, making him even more nervous. Hinata was a friend and teammate he shouldn't be deterred by any angry Haikta. Even he knew about the feelings that the girl held for Naruto, so not being able to see her over the span of the past few days concerned him, he also kind of missed the guy. Naruto was kind of an idiot at the best of times, but he was still one of his friends. It was tough, but no one needed to suffer dealing with those feelings with or without Shino. He was going to try his best. Tiba took a breath before he went to knock. He stopped his fist just before the face of Niji Haikta, who had his usual serious expression on his face, Niji where'd you come from? Kiba asked while pointing at the dark-haired boy who just blinked at his fellow teen. I live here. Niji responded while Kiba awkwardly nodded his head in response, right, I was about to knock through you all probably knew that. Being Haikka and all. Kiba commented before he scratched the back of his head, Niji resisted the urge to roll his eyes. Then you should also know that the only reason why I'm here right now is because I got tired of watching you make semi-circles around the entrance for the past 25 minutes. Now did you need something? The Haika snarked while Kiba broke into a sweat, I came to check on Hinata, it's been a while since we've seen her. It's starting to get a little concerning, I even heard that she's locked herself in her room. I wanted to see if she was alright. Kiba stated while Niji blinked at him his mild irritation slightly vanished. You might be glad to hear, but Hinata being locked up in her room is no longer an issue. 
Niji replied, causing Kiba's expression to brighten into a smile, seriously, then we'll be able to Kiba was interrupted by a hand being raised to his face, the wide-eyed boy in front of him slowly shook his head. However, she's requested that she receives no visitors for the time being. I'm sure she would appreciate the gesture, but I won't allow you to enter against her wishes. Huh? What do you mean? Hinata wouldn't say something like that, we're her friend she wouldn't just tell us to leave her alone. I get you're trying to protect her and all but. Kiba suddenly felt a shift in the atmosphere, while Niji's eyes narrowed into a glare toward the Inuzuka air, don't assume for one minute, because you've worked with someone for a period of time that you know them completely, don't assume the reasons for any of my own actions either. Niji looked to the side before he looked back toward Kiba. If you were really her friend, then you would respect her wishes. That in of itself is another gesture Hinata would appreciate. Niji warned while Kiba gulped, fine, but could you at least tell her that we're here for her? Even if she happens to feel alone we'll always be there to look out for her. Kiba stood his ground to Niji who silently bowed his head before turning away from the brown-haired boy. Hinata. Don't keep us all waiting too long alright. Some of us are starting to miss you too. Kiba walked away from the compound, he noticed that he was still hearing the sound of wood smashing. The brown-haired teen turned back around toward the retreating form of Niji while he raised an eyebrow. Wait. If that was Niji just talking to him then who was it that he was listening to train so hard? Kiba sat there looking toward the compound again with a curious expression on his features, before he turned away from the home, the sound still moving through the air. 8 palms. 16 palms. 32 palms. 64 palms. The sound of wood smashing stopped abruptly before the sound of a deep breath being taken was heard, the dirt underneath a barefoot quietly crunched while a leg gracefully moved into a grounded stance. The lithe frame in front of the mostly destroyed wooden pillar held bloodied palms in front of the damaged pillar, wide eyes narrowed focused on nothing but the target right in front of them, a mixture of quiet rage and frustration in them. 128, pal. Enough. Niji's voice interrupted while the bloodied palm stopped before making contact with the wooden pillar, the dark-haired boy stepped down the small set of stairs toward the opposite pair of wide eyes, while a small girl watched them both a little further away. Oh Niji. The voice replied with a gentle tone followed by a bow, that technique shouldn't be used lightly, especially by you. The strain it has on the body is great, you should avoid using it if possible. Niji wanted while Hinata looked down toward the dirt. He wouldn't. Hinata Hayuga clenched her bloodied hands, causing even Niji to flinch at the sight, her hands had shown hours of training with multiple lacerations on them. Hinata's voice trembled her usual gentleness seemingly only hanging by a thread. Naruto wouldn't have given up. Hinata uttered her frustration peeking through the gentle mask she tried to keep up on her face, before Niji looked at her hands, he resisted grabbing her wrist to show her the damage she was causing to herself. It's been two days since Hinata emerged from her room however the only thing that Niji has ever seen her do besides eating has been training, there was a motivation in her eyes that he had never seen before no, that's a lie, he has seen it before. Whenever he looked in the mirror. However for some reason when Niji saw that expression in his cousin's eyes the way she carried it reminded him of her father, and not in the way one would take pride in. It wasn't a look he wanted to see on her face. Your hands. Niji watched as Hinata lifted her hands to look at them herself, pausing at the sight of the blood, thank you for your concern, but I'm alright. Hinata then walked over to a small fountain to rinse the blood off her hands. Niji was speechless as he watched Hinata wrap her hands in bandages before she got right back to the wooden pillar, a slave to the anger she had felt deep down that she would never let anyone else see. Her worst kept secret. I wouldn't try it. I've already tried, I'll just wait for her to pass out, then drag her back to her room. Hanabi Hayuga voiced, causing Niji to look toward his younger cousin, who watched her sister train from behind her bangs, her chin resting on her knees in a sitting-up fetal-like position. She was upset, something that the boy began to note about his two cousins was the fact that they were honest yet horribly dishonest. Hanabi adored her sister, but her words and mannerisms would become bitter when she was worried about her. Hanada's sudden motivation is something we Hayuga find impressive, I myself am proud of her. Niji and Hanabi looked back toward the Hayuga patriarch who looked on from the spot he walked to, father. Hanabi commented while he ashi Hayuga stepped forward Niji gritted his teeth before the man watched Hanada train. Since the departure of Naruto Uzumaki, she's been more motivated than ever. If I had known the benefits of the decision we should have discussed it long ago. The Ashi commented while Hanabi said nothing, opting to watch over her sister, while Niji gritted his teeth even harder, while he himself was quick to point out the flaws in the honesty of his cousins, he was almost too honest in his features. Is that what you think of his destiny? He's just a means to an end for Hanada's benefit. The Ashi looked toward Niji with a surprised look, while the boy never took his eyes off of Hinata, who kept attacking her invisible opponent she envisioned on the wooden pillar she had been attacking so relentlessly. 
Regardless of his destiny, Naruto Uzumaki was a dangerous existence, not only his relationship with the fox. He was also a distraction, with him being gone Hinata will benefit. One day she'll understand that this was the right thing to do. The Ashi's tone was cold while Niji looked toward his uncle wordlessly while the man didn't take his eyes off of the frustrated Hinata. Niji looked back at Hinata's blood from her palms on the dirt, taking him back to when Naruto had challenged him for her sake, a fist full of her blood and an expression of anger and determination. The blue eyes that had set him free from his cursed destiny. Was this also destiny? Was it that no matter what had been done Naruto would always have been destined to be sent away to the mercy of the rest of the world? Watching Hinata tear herself apart to express a sorrow even he couldn't understand wasn't the kind of destiny he ever wanted. The bird circled around the open air of the training area, flapping its wings to stay afloat, looking down at the four Hyuga before it flew away to wherever it wanted to go, Niji watched the bird before his eyes narrowed. Since he had control of his own destiny. Would he be able to create a path where Hinata didn't have to tear herself apart and Naruto wouldn't have to face the entirety of the world by himself? This question rang through the head of Niji Hayuga while his fist was clenched so hard to his side that his arm trembled. Hovers flew off a bed while Naruto quickly dashed around his new small home, it was bright and early just the time the blonde needed to be up and awake for the start of his new job that he had gotten in the land of waves. It was his first day. The blonde boy quickly got ready before he dashed out of the door and toward the Tazuna house to get his day started. Hey old man. I'm here. Naruto yelled excitedly from outside the house while Tsunami opened the door, Naruto, come in, but please try to keep it down most of the neighborhood is still trying to sleep. Tsunami gently warned while Naruto nodded his head. Right my bad. The blonde lowered his voice to a harsh whisper, Tsunami smiled, resisting her urge to chuckle. I've got breakfast ready so grab yourself a bowl and eat up. Tsunami allowed the excited boy into the home where he beelined to the kitchen. Thanks Tsunami. Hey Inari. Naruto gave a quick greeting to the already eating boy who gave back the greeting with just as much gusto, as much as a boy with a mouthful of food could muster. The young ninja wolfed down his food before he was already back up and at it again, his destination this time being Tazuna's office. Naruto nearly left skid marks with how fast he dashed off to get his assignment. Old man, Naruto Uzumaki is reporting for duty. Naruto gave a quick salute toward the older man with a couple stacks of papers surrounding him, geez kid how much energy do you have? It's still super early, at least pretend you're tired. Tazuna commented while Naruto fist pumped the air. I'm just ready to get work. So what do you have in store for me today? Naruto asked while Tazuna fished a piece of paper with a list of requests on it, this is a list from the village of things they need help getting done, good thing you're here. Cause there's plenty that needs to get done. Tazuna said while Naruto grabbed a piece of paper. Help Lady Tsu harvest the vegetables, fishing, assistance with construction. These kinda seem like regular tasks, there's nothing crazy going on. Naruto asked while Tazuna gave the boy a grin, listen if there's one thing I've learned while being responsible for the village, it's that there is nothing simple about those tasks. Think you can handle them? Tazuna pointed toward Naruto who looked at the list again before he gave the older man a wide grin. Got it? This'll be easy as pie. Naruto cheered while Tazuna smiled, more jobs will come up as time passes, but for now think of these as your regular tasks. Naruto grinned at the man before he nodded. Alright. See you all in a bit. Naruto turned to leave the residence quickly before being stopped by Tsunami who was carrying a small wrapped box. Lunch, remember ninja or not, you're still a growing boy, so you need to make sure you eat properly. Tsunami offered the lunch to the puzzled blonde boy before he took it gingerly, his grin widened as he looked at the bento in his hands. Right, I'll bring it back I promise. Naruto's boy sounded touched while Tsunami smiled at him, be back soon and work hard. Tsunami said while Naruto eagerly nodded. Of course. Naruto then dashed out of the door, Inari walked out of the kitchen holding a cloth in his hand. Did Naruto leave already? Inari asked while Tsunami nodded, yup, I'm sure he's trying to push himself to repay us even though he doesn't have to. Tazuna sighed before a small grin graced his face. What a kid a good kid nonetheless. Tazuna went back to his work while Tsunami ushered Inari back toward the kitchen, the young boy held the cloth in his hand, as if it was precious. Naruto dashed from rooftop to rooftop looking over the village while a grin slowly broke out over his face. The first thing on his list was being part of the construction part, apparently a few new residences were being built. Nothing good Olay Naruto Uzumaki couldn't handle though. The blonde bounded from house to house before he eventually made it to the construction site, he looked on at the side of half-built houses and multiple men moving materials around before he sighed. Hey, Naruto Uzumaki is here to help. Naruto's hand flew up into the air announcing his presence causing multiple men to look toward his direction. Huh, that really is Naruto. He looks shorter than I thought. That's cause he's a kid you idiot. A kid? 
ninja or not ain't it dangerous to have someone so young running around a site. A few of the construction workers clambered amongst themselves before Naruto found himself face to face with the foreman. He was a gentleman who looked to be in his late thirties early forties, with that gruff but kind vibe coming off of him. You must be Naruto, the ninja helper. The older man eyed the eager boy while he nodded back. That's me. So what's first? Naruto asked while the older man motioned his head toward a large mortar pit that had been running a little low, the mortar pit needs to be filled. Naruto only blinked at the older man's response. Huh? Mortar don't you mean murder? Wait, why does a construction site have a murder pit? Naruto yelled pointing an accusatory finger at the older man who was unamused, mortar for building you brickhead. I'll have you mixing and loading. The older man commented while Naruto looked into the pit again. Oh, so what's mortar again? Naruto asked dumbly while the older man resisted the urge to face palm, the kid was an idiot exactly what he needed. I'll give you the proper rundown the further into this we get, for right now I'll show you how to properly mix mortar. Naruto nodded in response to the older man before he followed him over to the pit, the blonde watched closely while he watched the process. It looked really boring to do his opinion. He thought he was going to be constructing with the other guys, but they have him on brick cement duty. Once the explanation was finished Naruto immediately got to work mixing mortar for the other guys to use. The process was exhausting, but he didn't forget one important thing, he was still able to use jutsu. Shadow clone jutsu. Three more duplicates of Naruto appeared, suddenly pumping their fists into the air eagerly. Alright let's do this. Naruto cheered while his clones cheered with him as they speed up the motor creating process, the older man watched Naruto from a distance before he sighed. Using his clones made the job way faster he should have just started with this, eventually he would be doing construction work with the rest of the guys. After quickly finishing the pit, Naruto wasted no time getting back to the foreman with the good news. Looks like the pit is full and with record time too, I might even be able to build a house in a day too. Naruto answered confidently while the foreman looked at the pot before he stuck a hand in, it's loose. The foreman said while Naruto blinked. Huh? The boy gaped dumbly while the foreman took a handful of Naruto's mortar, allowing it to freely run through his hands and onto the ground. Mortar shouldn't be loose as should be a certain thickness to ensure it dries properly to hold brick in place. The foreman shook his hand, getting the loose mortar off of his hands, while Naruto looked at it run on the ground. It looked good to me. Naruto kept his eyes on the watery mortar while the older man sighed, do you want to know why construction is dangerous, blondie? The older man motioned toward the other guys working on the brick buildings ahead. One might say it's the risk of falling, others may say it's the tools, hell even the amount of manual labor. However the truth is way bigger than all of those things. The older man said while Naruto listened carefully to him watching the other men work as well. The real dangerous part are the lives that are placed into our hands with the structures that we build. The older man looked at the half-finished buildings almost wistfully, while Naruto's eyes slowly widened, we build homes, offices, multiple structures, places where people have to live and work. When those buildings fail then the blood is on our hands. The older man said while Naruto looked down at the ground. I know mixing mortar isn't the most fun, but I will say it's one of the most important parts of building anything. The foreman said while Naruto looked at the older man who blinked at the sight of his men working. A brick house made without mortar isn't a home it's just a pile of bricks. Naruto registered his words before he looked back at the watery pit of mortar he sped through with his clones. If you want to go home now kid I won't blame you, I was a little harsh there, but it's something you have to learn. This is a risky business anyway. The foreman said, patting Naruto on the back before walking back toward the office with a sigh. I really gotta get better with that. The older man said to himself before he heard the sound of a loud boom, he quickly turned around while loose mortar flew past his tall frame. Naruto had thrown his shirt to the side and rolled up his pants, whatever he did to the mortar it was gone now. The only thing that remained were determined blue eyes. I'll do it again. Naruto stood in the mortar pit below, while the fireman's eyes widened slowly, I said you could go home, the fumes are dangerous in there. It's fine, we can handle it. The foreman kept the concern out of his voice before Naruto shook his head. I ain't giving up old foreman. That goes against my ninja way, I'll make the best damn mortar you've ever seen. Naruto declared already dumping the mortar mix he brought in with him this time carefully mixing his work. This way I can help build houses that can be homes one day homes where people can be safe. The mortar cake boy said while the foreman nearly gawked at the boy in the pit, he had rarely seen this drive, especially for a job like this. He couldn't even help the grin that came to his face when Naruto's determined expression didn't even waver once. Then show me what you've got. The foreman then left Naruto to his work and lo and behold within a few hours he was indeed looking at great quality mortar and an exhausted blonde. After a short break Naruto waved at the foreman and the rest of the construction crew before he jumped off to his next job. Fishing. 
apparently, the land of waves had a large quantity of fish that the village mostly relied on for their most abundant food source. Naruto had fished before but never like this, while he was used to small pond fish and the occasional frog. These fishermen were pulling in monstrous fish and the hard-working blonde. Didn't even have a single bite. Ah. Why aren't these fish biting? Is the bait bad or something? Naruto's frustration was getting the best of him, while in the small boat his fishing partner chuckled. You know the fish can sense emotions, right? The young brown-haired man in the boat with Naruto chuckled while the blonde shot him a glare. How can they do that? They're fish, the only thing they think about is food. Naruto grumbled while the brown-haired young man shrugged, yeah good food not spoiled by a frustrated fisherman. His partner chuckled again while Naruto growled. Yeah? Where's your big pile of fish then? Naruto turned back toward his rod before the brown-haired young man chuckled again, you're scaring them away. The man responded. Look Naruto, you gotta stop being so hard on yourself. This is your first time fishing like this. You gotta allow yourself to be new even the pros don't catch stuff all the time. The brown-haired man gave Naruto a nudge, while the blonde sighed tugging at his biteless rod. How can I help by doing nothing? If I can't catch a fish that means I'm just wasting time out here. Naruto uttered while the brown-haired man sighed, sometimes the best way to help is by doing nothing, you can't always force stuff to happen, no matter how badly you want it to happen. The man said while Naruto turned toward him. Patience, good things come to those who wait. Stop trying to force an outcome and go with the flow. The man said with a small smile while Naruto nearly rolled his eyes impatiently before he looked at the still water. The boy took a breath before he had stuck his rod into the water with a new vigor, hoping his attempt at patience would bag a big one. Needless to say, Naruto ended up catching nothing that day. Still a little frazzled from his last job, Naruto looked at a large plot of farmland covered in vegetation. Remember these are living beings as well, treat the veggies with respect. The voice of an old woman said before the blonde eagerly rolled his sleeves up grinning at the task ahead of him. So I just gotta pull out the harvest of vegetables right? Naruto said with a grin before he dashed with a large confident grin on his face, while the old woman sighed. The blonde boy stood in the damp dirt looking down at the top of the first radish, before rubbing his hands together. Bring it on, radish. The blonde yelled before he roughly grabbed the top of the vegetable and began to tug at it with all his strength. The radish wasn't budging at all. Naruto huffed before he tried pulling again, still to no avail as the supposed radish stayed put. The boy looked around, starting to get a little frustrated, fine, I didn't want to use this, but you left me no choice. Naruto threatened the vegetable before making his famous ram sign with his fingers. Shadow clone jutsu. Two clones appeared before Naruto nodded at them, let's get to pulling. The blonde yelled out while his clones cheered. They proceeded to pull out the one Naruto was originally struggling with before they had worked together to pull out multiple vegetables. Naruto looked at his handiwork with a tired smile, the old woman approached the blonde boy and his clones. Check it out lady, it looks like this whole vegetable thing was no big deal. I should be done pretty soon. Naruto cheerfully said before the old woman whacked both of Naruto's clones, causing them to disappear. Oi, what's the big idea? Naruto raised his voice before he was popped on the mouth by the old woman's walking stick. I remember asking you to respect the vegetables. The old man said before Naruto rubbed his face, look. The old woman motioned to the vegetables he had pulled out. Their leaves were damaged, some of them had been nicked and bruised. The blue-eyed boy blinked at the vegetables before he awaited another whack from the old woman. Yet it never came. I'm sorry for hitting you, I just wanted you to listen. Vegetables and people don't have too many things that are different about them. The old woman said while well, Naruto's eyes slightly widened at the apology from the old woman. He wasn't expecting that, it was odd since he had just gotten used to being pummeled when he said something dumb before going on with his day. It was different. Vegetables are living beings just like we are, and just like us they try their hardest to live day by day. The old woman gently brushed her hand over the leaves of a firmly planted radish, we have to take their lives to keep our own, the least we can do is show them respect. Whether or not you think they understand it. The grey-haired woman then grabbed the top of the leaves before she pulled. The vegetable came out of the ground perfectly well being held in the woman's hands. Sometimes all something needs is a little tug instead of a great pull. Try that and you'll see that the vegetables will make things easier for you. Naruto marveled at the gently smiling old woman before he nodded his head. He looked at another vegetable planted into the ground, its leaves swayed peacefully in the wind. He never thought he could relate his own life to a radish. The blonde returned to the path back to the small house that had been his current residence. He didn't believe it himself, but he was exhausted, what he thought would have been a bunch of easy tasks had taken him his entire day to complete. From what it looked like he would have to help with several of these every day, Naruto never knew that there was so much effort in daily life. He was used to the leaf village where he only had to wake up, occasionally buy food, kick butt as a ninja, and go home. 
Everyone here worked hard daily just to live the lives that they lived. It was awe-inspiring. Naruto. Tsunami waved from the front of his small house, causing the blue-eyed boy to lift a hand and tiredly wave back. Naruto was then escorted into the house revealing Tazuna and Inari with party poppers under a banner that read to a great day's work on it. The blonde looked at the message with surprise while the tsunami breezed past the blonde. I ended up using your kitchen, I hope that's okay. Tsunami said opting for forgiveness instead of permission while she returned to her post to put food on the table. What what is all this? The awe was ever present in Naruto's voice while Tazuna walked over patting a hand on Naruto's shoulder. We're celebrating your first hard day of work in the village of course, this is also a housewarming party too you could say. Azuna grinned at the boy while Inari bounced on his heels while looking toward his blonde idol. Come on, mom cooked some extra special stuff this time. Inari excitedly tugged Naruto toward the table while Tsunami continued to place the feast on the table. The group settled at the table before they started eating, you were working hard today from what I was told. Tazuna took another bite while Naruto stared at his food. More like hardly working old man, I kind of sucked out there today. Naruto absent-mindedly tapped a finger on the table, I did nothing but screw up out there today, I couldn't make mortar, I couldn't fish, I tore up vegetables. I hardly deserve a party for any of that. Naruto expressed while Tazuna looked toward Tsunami who chuckled. The three other people in the room began to laugh while Naruto's head shot up to look at them. What's so funny? I'm being serious. Naruto watched as the tsunami sighed, but you never gave up. Tsunami took another bite of her food before Tazuna pointed his chopsticks at the blonde. Nobody's perfect kid, I hardly expected you to go out and do these tasks like you've been doing them forever. Not to mention I haven't received a single complaint about you. Tazuna grinned while Naruto's eyes widened, his thoughts went to Sasuke, the poster boy of perfection in his eyes. That guy couldn't do anything wrong it seemed like. Yet all he did today was screw up and no one was disappointed in him. But you gave me the job because you believed I could do a good job, I should have done just that and I didn't. The blonde kept his eyes on the unwavering grin of Tazuna, you're only one person, the point of a job is that you have your role that others can assist you with and they have roles you could one day assist with. Everyone in this village works together. Tazuna took another bite of his food. You're not alone anymore, Naruto. Tsunami said gently while the blonde nearly knocked over some of his food from the shock alone. His thoughts went to his dingy apartment, his only company being flowers, the feeling of Sasuke's hand being plunged into his chest, his best friend trying to kill him, the pained expression of Tsunade when he got kicked out of the leaf village. Those were some of the moments that Naruto had felt his loneliest, but now that he thought about it. He really wasn't alone now was he? Naruto thought of the friends that he still had all throughout the world and even still in the leaf. His dingy apartment had been transformed into a small house where he was eating dinner with Tazuna, Tsunami, and Inari. He barely noticed the tears that ran down his face before Inari cleared his throat getting the blonde's attention. So uh, you said that a ninja needs a headband and that a headband is an important symbol right? Tsunami and Tazuna both smiled at the bashful boy while Naruto raised an eyebrow at him. Here. I know it's not a leaf village one, but you're still a ninja to me, so I made you one myself. Inari passed the object to Naruto who looked at it while holding it like it was the most fragile object in the world. The band itself was a navy blue color similar to the one he had originally but darker, there was a slightly off metal plate attached to it. The blonde rubbed his thumb over the characters that made up the word engraved on the plate. Chapter 4. Once beaten, twice sore. Those who break the rules are scum, but those who abandon their friends are worse than scum. That's what you said isn't it? The gray-haired man looked over at Tombstone, the same one he's been visiting for years without fail. The one where his friends were buried. However today Kakashi felt a bit more haunted than usual, it's been a month and five days since Naruto was banished from the leaf. While he did believe in the boy's tenacity and determination he still couldn't help but worry about him. The world was a dangerous place especially for a ninja as young as him, yet Kakashi still let him walk away all by himself. He really was a bad sensei, he could practically feel Minato rolling in his grave. Don't even get him started with Kashina. Kakashi shuddered at the thought before his thoughts went back to their progeny who he was supposed to be responsible for. Could he consider Naruto a friend? A part of him did honestly, Naruto was his student, but the more they went through the more he slowly recognized the boy. He was annoying at the worst of times, but at the best of times he was inspirational with an infectious energy. The part of him also felt like he abandoned him. Looks like I became scum in the end anyway Habito. Bakashi lamented to himself before he heard the soft footsteps of someone approaching from behind. The masked man sighed before he lazily turned his head, fancy meeting you here you go. Kakashi then slightly moved his head to the side, easily avoiding a thrown kunai. His eye widened before he blinked at the sudden action, didn't your mother ever tell you not to talk about a different woman in front of one? 
the familiar voice of one of his colleagues caused Kakashi to sigh even harder than before. Anko Midarashi, formerly one of Kakashi's juniors and now fully-fledged Tonketsu Jonin. The purple-haired woman approached him while he turned his attention toward her, to what do I owe the pleasure of your presence? Kakashi eyed the young woman who huffed. I'm bored, I saw you on the walkover and decided to bother you. Also, speaking of Yugao, I haven't heard from her in the past month. Anko said well this piqued Kakashi's interest, some kind of long mission. Anko shrugged her shoulders. She could just be dead. Kakashi chuckled at the younger woman, doubted, highly doubted. Kakashi responded while Anko pointed a finger at him. Enough of that, you hungry? We're having lunch. Kakashi's eyebrow raised at the sudden offer before he sighed, I'm not in the mood to be a part of some bet, tell Guy that victory is his this time. Kakashi nonchalantly said before turning his back on the young woman while throwing up a peace sign. The grey-haired man suddenly felt the back of his flak jacket collar get harshly tugged before a kunai was pointed toward his eye, the hell are you going on about some bet? It's an invitation, asshole. Anko growled while Kakashi sweat dropped. There are nicer ways to ask. Kakashi watched the younger woman groan before she gritted her teeth, the grey-haired man was amused at the internal debate going on inside of Anko's head. Honestly he didn't know much about his kohai, he knew about her curse mark, the fact that she's most definitely addicted to Dango, and that she was once aiming to become a part of the Anbu Black Ops. Other than that he didn't really know anything about Anko. Especially why she was suddenly asking him to lunch. Unfortunately Kakashi was a curious man, his curiosity sometimes leading him into several situations both good and bad. However as the older one in the situation he had become wise and learned from his mistakes. He wouldn't crack this time. Please. Anko muttered in a tone Kakashi had never heard from her before in the entirety of the time he's known her, hell he didn't think anybody had heard that tone from her before. That combined with the look of shattered pride on her face was a dangerous combination indeed. Kakashi had it crumbled in an instant. Sure. Kakashi I smiled at the pouting young woman who then unleashed a punch into the jonin's shoulder. It was hard but clearly not hard enough to be a serious one, Kakashi rubbed his sore arm with a faux expression of pain on his face while Anko stomped ahead. Hope it was worth it. Anko threw her hands up before resting them behind her head continuing to walk forward, Kakashi followed behind catching up to her before he peered over his shoulder to look at the purple-haired woman. Mind if I ask what the sudden invitation is for? If this is for something extracurricular then I'm not necessarily against it, but I'm sure there are different less complicated ways to relieve stress. Kakashi offered before he was sent flying to the ground, his face firmly planting against the path the pair were walking on, say some shit like that again, and the next one kills you, it's just a simple lunch with a colleague you smut reading perv. Anko stomped ahead while Kakashi immediately recovered back to his feet. Smut is a strong word for my choice of literature, it's merely adult literature. Kakashi defended his precious series only receiving a glare in response from the younger woman, if you really got to know then it's Doc's orders. It's not good to be constantly alone, she said. Anko admitted while Kakashi gave the young woman another look. He could tell she was serious. Ox orders, huh? Why me then? You and Kur and I are close, she probably would have been better company. Kakashi kept his eye on her while Anko made eye contact with him, I need someone that can be serious with me tell me I'm being irrational. Anko said before she turned to continue walking forward. Kakashi gave the younger woman a look. He had never known Anko to be the type to display such emotion. Naruto made a bigger impact on this village than he could have ever imagined, Kakashi just wished he would be able to see it. Fine, if you want someone to be crass so badly then I hope you can put up with me. Kakashi answered while Anko rolled her eyes at the man before she opened the doors to her usual dango spot. It was bright once of the clearest days in the history of the village, while footsteps were heard rushing along a rooftop. The figure jumped back flipping from that roof to another before dashing across that roof as well. Villagers looked toward the dashing figure while they smiled, the headband on his head shined in the morning sunlight as he jumped from roof to roof. A foxy grin was on the blonde boy's face as he spotted his next destination. Good morning Naruto. The villager shouted from the ground before the boy jumped into the air again. Good morning. Naruto yelled before he dashed toward the new site he would be working at, the villagers cheerfully greeted the boy as he passed by them. Naruto Uzumaki was headed off to work. The blonde slid in front of an older gentleman who was watching a dozen more men carrying stuff around. Mr. Murabito. Sorry I'm late, I got a little caught up. Naruto scratched the back of his head while the older man grinned, I figured, better late than never. We need more mortar stat, not to mention the brick team needs help, and we could use an extra pair of hands on the office construction. Murabito said while Naruto grinned. Consider it done. Naruto cheered before he ran toward the site, weaving his famous hand sign summoning multiple clones. Alright, I'm going to help the brick team. 
Naruto's group 1 you guys are on mortar duty, Naruto's group 2, you'll help the rest of the guys with constructing the office. Got it. Naruto ordered while his clones gave the original a salute. Got it boss. The clones then dashed to their specific places before Naruto himself dashed toward the half-built bathhouse. That's Naruto. One of the construction workers called out while several clones rushed into carrying stacks of lumber into the nearly built office. Hey Ryuchi, hey Muzen, hey Kaiuse. The clones greeted while the other men began to accept the lumber from the hands of the clones. Boy Naruto. One of the men tossed over a hammer to one of the clones who caught it, thanks. Alright boys, let's get these suckers nailed down. Naruto clone one yelled while the entirety of the construction team cheered. Meanwhile more clones pushing a wheelbarrow filled with mortar made it to the bath where the original was setting brick. Thanks guys. Naruto thanked his clones while the pair nodded before going back to their station at the pit. Naruto, hate to ask, but I need a favor. One of the construction workers asked Naruto who looked over at the large structure the men were standing in front of. Whoa, which one of you guys made this? Naruto looked at the large stone brick in front of him while the other workers all aimed their glances at a black-haired younger guy. It's not that bad. The younger guy tried to convince the other to no avail, cut ban a break, mistakes happen. Naruto shrugged while Ban sniffled while looking at the blonde. Thanks Naruto. Ban said while Naruto pointed toward him, next time try not to fall asleep at the brick cutter huh? Naruto teased with a grin while Ban scratched the back of his head, the blonde boy moves toward the large brick before he summoned a clone. Little help. Naruto asked his clones as he extended his hand toward it, the clone nodded before moving his hands over Naruto's open palm, slowly molding chakra. Thanks. Naruto said while his clones disappeared in his palm was a small spiraling sphere of chakra. Rasengan. Naruto slowly placed the sphere against the brick, the spiraling chakra ball had no problem cutting into the stone. The other men watched as Naruto carefully used his jutsu to cut into the brick like a tool, the blonde quickly finished the large brick, turning it into a stack of multiple smaller bricks. There. Naruto wiped the sweat off of his face while the rest of the men cheered, they laid the rest of the bricks into the bath, before Naruto looked at the clock on the wall. Crap sorry, guys I'm going to be late. I'll leave a clone or two. Naruto apologized while the other men shook their heads, you're a busy guy we get it, get going you crazy kid. Ban said while Naruto nodded his head. I'll catch you guys later. Naruto waved before he dashed out of the bathhouse, he quickly stopped by the small office of Murabito. Hey Mr. Murabito. I've got a dash to the river to meet with the rest of the fishermen, I'm going to leave a few clones. Naruto watched a man give Naruto a nod, good work today, take your time with getting here tomorrow. I'm worried you've gotten a little too good at this stuff. Yurubito gave the boy a rare grin while nodding his head, gotcha. I won't be late next time. Naruto nodded before he dashed off to his next job. Yurubito watched a boy leave huffing as the boy left, if he keeps this up, he may end up putting us out of the job. The older man said before he went back to his paperwork. Meanwhile Tazuna was going through the paperwork at his own office almost frantically. In two weeks the mayor of the village would be returning, and he still had a ton of work he had to get through. Oddly enough Naruto was not helping with his paperwork influx, in the past month he had somehow become even more of a celebrity than he was before. He was getting requests from all over the district for Naruto to get work done, and while the blonde took the work in stride, Tazuna groaned at the paperwork. However, the older man looked at the ceiling with a grin on his face, imagining Naruto working hard around the village. That kid was safe and happy here. So if it's for him then maybe another couple of stacks of paperwork wouldn't be too horrible. Good morning father. Tsunami greeted before she placed a plate on his desk, ah Tsunami, thank you for bringing up some grub. I could have come down and grabbed it. Tazuna marveled at the meal while Tsunami smiled. Well I was on the way anyway so I figured I might as well. It's no problem. Tazuna grabbed his fork ready to dig into his late breakfast before he raised an eyebrow, right, did you need something? You said you were on the way up here anyway. Tazuna asked before another stack of paperwork was placed on his desk. I just wanted to drop these off. Tsunami said the smile never left her face while her father groaned again, I was being facetious the man leaned back in his chair with a stretch. These are actually more for reading than anything, I admit I did take a peek and thought you'd might want to see them too. Tazuna looked at the paperwork before he started looking through the pile, his eyes slowly widening. Seriously South District has nearly been fully constructed. That job was lined up to take months. Azuna exclaimed while Tsunami slowly nodded her head, Naruto's been working really hard ever since he arrived here. Now the village is starting to love him. Tsunami said while Tazuna nodded his head. Yeah they are aren't they? Azuna and Tsunami sat there quietly for a moment, in the past month that Naruto has been here he's really started to grow on them. Tazuna felt like he had gained an older and just as energetic grandson, while Tsunami felt like he was already family. They both knew that this wouldn't last forever. 
Somehow that felt a little sad. No, you're the idiot. A yell from downstairs broke both of the adults from their stupor before Tsunami huffed. I'll take care of it. The dark-haired woman's tone switched to a rare one that Tazuna flinched at the sound of, poor Inari. The older man went back to his paperwork, avoiding the angry motherly aura coming from his daughter as she exited the room. Tsunami breezed down the stairs spotting her son and another child standing at the doorway. Tsunami was rarely ever truly angry, nor did the woman ever really yell, but as she was human, she did still become frustrated. And she always demonstrated that frustration with a smile that could spook grown men. What happens to be the problem, Inari? Tsunami spoke in a sickly sweet tone just behind Inari, causing the young boy to flinch at the sight. M mom. Inari fell onto his butt, while Tsunami continued to smile at him before getting shakily pointed. It's her fault. Inari quickly shifted the blame to the other individual, Tsunami slowly turned her head toward the other offending child, who slightly trembled at the side of her face. The look quickly left her face as soon as she registered who the other individual was before her scary smile became genuine. Oh, good morning Haruna. Tsunami chirped while the girl standing outside the door looked away bashfully from the older woman. Haruka was around the same age as Inari, possibly older, she was the daughter of the mayor currently staying with her mother in the village, while her father was gone. The young girl had cherry brown hair that had been pulled into messily made pigtails tied with ribbons. Her light purple eyes always seemed to shine a certain color in the morning light of the land of waves, they also shined that way for possibly other reasons. Tsunami's eyes sparkled while she looked in between her and a trying to look innocent, while Inari pointed an accusatory finger at her. Ah, young L.O.V. Good morning Ms. Tsunami, I'm here because Naruto wasn't at his house. I have a job for him today. Haruka shook away her nervousness and spoke with a false bravado, Inari rolled his eyes at the girl. You just want a reason to hang around big bro, Naruto is way too cool for a baby like you. Inari said, turning his nose up while her and narrowed her eyes at the boy, quiet twerp, you could never understand the way I feel. The way he gently looks at me with those ocean blue eyes. Haruna blinked dreamily into the air while Inari gagged. Tsunami's eyes still sparkled while she looked at the pair, the typical pair of young lovers she was looking forward to their development. In the meantime Tsunami gave Inari a light tap on the back of his head, be nice to girls Inari, you know what happens when you aren't. Tsunami gently earned while the boy huffed. That's right, listen to your mother. She is a smart and elegant woman. Aruna said with a curtsy while Tsunami smiled, I know who isn't. Inari grumbled, causing the brown-haired girl to glare at him. Why you little? Tsunami gave the girl a gentle tap on her head as well, Haruna, girls also have to be nice to boys as well. I'm sure Naruto only likes nice girls. Tsunami warned that quickly got Haruna to straighten up her act. I am a nice girl. Haruna smiled and gracefully curtsied before Inari huffed, whatever helps you sleep at night. Inari mumbled before Haruna's graceful image cracked. Boy Tsunami. The voice called out from behind where Haruna was standing at the door, the brown-haired girl quickly turned around and spotted the blonde. Naruto was covered in dirt, his t-shirt was slung over his shoulder while his pants were rolled up. Tsunami smiled at the approaching boy, he must have just got back from Machiru's farmland. Haruna meanwhile wasted no time dashing toward her current object of affection, Naruto. I missed you. Haruna cooed before tackling the boy with a hug. What are you doing here Haruna? Naruto asked obliviously before patting her head with his hand, I'm here to see you of course. Haruna clung onto the boy tightly while Inari gagged. Welcome back Naruto, how was work? Tsunami asked her eyes still flicking between the two children, she still had her motherly intuition running on the both of them. This was an obvious case of girl crushes on the older cooler guy, while the boy she actually falls for sticks clothes and is grossed out by her flirting attempts. Tsunami was giving Naruto a silent thumbs up in her head for properly playing his part in their love story. The blonde boy could have sworn he saw steam come out of Tsunami's nose before he shook his head. The latest harvest and reseeding at the farmlands is done, that bathhouse everyone has been raving about is almost finished, oh and I managed to catch a bunch of fish today, not as good of a haul as yesterday, but it's something. Naruto explained while he pulled himself from the grip of the girl holding on to him much to her dismay. If you want to borrow the bath I'll have lunch ready by the time you get out. Tsunami brought Haruna inside and pushed Inari toward the kitchen, Naruto gave a quick salute. Yes ma'am. Thank you. Naruto walked toward the bath while Tsunami made sure to drag Haruna away with a little extra force. Naruto returned from his bath in his new attire, he was wearing a short-sleeved black hoodie that has the Land of Wave insignia on the back, with a blue hood and blue sleeves, paired with navy blue cargo pants. The boy made sure his headband was fastened before he entered the dining room where the other three were waiting. Welcome. Go ahead and chow down, you earned it. The headband still looks super cool on you bro. You look really good in blue stuff too. 
Naruto smiled as the two youngest glared at each other, while Tsunami chuckled at their antics. Don't mind me then, thanks for the food. Naruto dug into his meal while Inari copied the older blonde boy across the table, enjoying the food with gusto. Gross. Verena turned her nose up at Inari who huffed, Naruto's doing the same thing, it's appreciating your food. Inari stated while Haruna looked at Naruto dreamily. That's because Naruto is a growing young man. Verena swooned at the blonde wolfing down his food Inari groaned loudly while Tsunami fangirled in her head. So Naruto, having you been saving up properly from your jobs around the village. Tsunami asked with genuine curiosity while the boy stopped eating for a moment, yeah totally other than the occasional meal and clothes I've saved up a crap ton. I've got a lot more money now than I used to. Naruto chuckled before he scratched the back of his head. Tsunami kept a smile on her face but felt a pang in her chest, by now he probably had enough to leave the village. She knew it wasn't fair, but a part of her didn't want him to leave, unfortunately it looks like she's gotten used to Naruto being around. That's awesome, eventually you could buy a bigger house around here. Inari exclaimed while Haruna's eyes lit up at the response, she nodded her head rapidly at Inari. Yeah. One of the big houses next to mine. Haruna cheered while Naruto swallowed more rice, huh maybe I could huh. Naruto laughed while Tsunami felt there was hope that potentially he would stay. That reminds me speaking of my house, that's the reason I came here today. Naruto Uzumaki, I have a job for you. Haruna pointed her chopsticks at the blonde who had half of a fish stuffed in his mouth, a job. Naruto asked through his full mouth. Yup and that job is to escort me home today, I'll make sure you are compensated handsomely. During a stately matter of fairly well both Tsunami and Inari sweat dropped, you just want an excuse to hang around Naruto more. Inari exclaimed while the girl frowned at him. Aruna, I understand that you like having Naruto around, but he's just had a busy day, maybe we could try again another time. The dark-haired mother replied gently before Naruto consumed his fish before pointing a thumb to himself. One escort coming right up. Naruto cheered while the rest of the dining room gave him a look, Naruto, are you sure? Tsunami asked while Naruto nodded his head. Yeah, it'll be easy PC. Also, I get to kick the crap out of any perverts on the way. Naruto bluntly stated before finishing his food, I knew I could count on you Naruto. Haruna cooed before Inari crossed his arms. Fine then I'm going to. Inari said while well, Tsunami and Naruto gave the young boy a look, what? I just don't trust Lady Weirdo around him. Inari said while well, the girl stood up pointing her chopstick at him. No one needs a brat like you following us around. Haruna yelled before Naruto clapped his hands together again appreciating his food he ate. Thanks for the food, it was delicious. Naruto said while Tsunami smiled, the blonde quickly collected the dishes, giving both kids a little tap on their heads with plates. Settle down guys, we'll all go together and it'll be great. Right. Naruto offered while the two younger kids nodded at him, okay. They both agreed peacefully before Naruto smirked. Tsunami smiled brightly at Naruto she could almost see her late husband standing where the boy currently stood. Despite everything that's happened to this boy he stays firm and never gives up, Inari looks up to him, and the village loved him already. She silently hoped that he would learn to love the village just as much. The younger kids got ready while Naruto himself was ready to go as well, the pair of kids waved their goodbyes before Naruto followed after them. Naruto. Tsunami stopped the blonde boy from walking before he gave her a peace sign. Don't worry. I'll make sure they're safe. Believe it. Naruto uttered his catchphrase causing Tsunami to grin a little, we'll be waiting for you both to get back. The dark-haired woman said before Naruto nodded following the two kids. Tsunami herself had finally started to come to a decision. Why are you always being all gross with big bro? You see this is why I can't trust you alone with him, you infect him with cooties. Well not. You're just jealous that Naruto is an amazing and handsome man well you're just a snotty kid. The two children bickering while Naruto was groaning in his head, he had officially came to a silent understanding with Kakashi in his head. I think I can understand you better now, Kakashi sensei Naruto thought to himself before he turned around spotting Inari flick Haruna, only for Haruna to return the favor with a meaty whack to his head. They both kind of reminded him of himself and Sakura just a little bit, Naruto suddenly paused at the thought. Sakura. The pink hair and green eyes immediately filled the boy's thoughts. How long had it been since he thought about Sakura? He's had a crush on that girl for as long as he can remember, all the times he confessed and was rejected. Had he been so busy surviving and working that he hadn't even thought about the girl he loved. Maybe that's for the best. It's not like he would ever be able to see her again, not to mention he'll no longer be able to keep his promise to her. Thinking about it, was there even a chance that Sakura would ever love him like she loved Sasuke? Naruto knew the answer all this time, but constantly being around her made him always keep fighting for her. Now that she's not here that means Naruto officially lost doesn't it? He wouldn't act surprised, Naruto knew what he was. There was no way that anybody would ever love him like that. 
a guy could always dream, but whenever Naruto dreamed of Sakura telling him she loved him, it always felt false. Naruto. A small voice asked the boy knocking him out of his stupor, are you okay? Haruna asked while Naruto blinked before he saw Inari with the same concerned expression. Naruto smirked before brushing his thumb on his chin before giving a thumbs up to the pair. Don't worry about me, I'm just as great as always. Naruto spoke confidently, but Haruna and Inari were all that convinced, the brown-haired girl sighed before she extended a small hand to Inari. And we call a truce. If us fighting is going to cause Naruto to get upset I'd rather get along with you. Haruna swallowed her pride while Inari looked at the girl before he took her hand and shook it. Agreed. The children came to a cordial agreement while Naruto looked at the pair with surprise, they honestly had nothing to do with his sudden thoughts. But maybe this would work out. Good job you two, you're both good kids. Why fight when you can be friends? Naruto asked while the pair looked at each other before they nodded their heads, the blonde smiled as they continued their journey. The trio eventually made it to the market where they had to cross though to get to the other side of the village. The two kids looked around the market with awe at all the different goods being sold at the multiple stands. Haruna's eyes were caught on a particular necklace, she managed to break her gaze away from it before she kept walking alongside Inari. This didn't go unnoticed by Naruto who suddenly had an idea, hey Junko. Naruto waved at one of the stand owners. Ah Naruto and the kids, what brings you to my stand? The pale purple haired woman spoke while Naruto clapped his hands together, would you mind keeping a quick eye on them, I'll just be a sec. Naruto yelled before he dashed off. Huh? Naruto. Where are you going? Aruna called after the boy who made his way into the crowd, don't worry about big bro, when he gets that look in his eyes he has a plan. Inari said a little too proudly, while Haruna frowned toward the direction he ran toward. Now I can't flirt with him. The girl loudly whined while Inari groaned at the girl's whining, Junko smiled at the two kids beginning to bicker again. Now you two lets the woman suddenly was cut off by the sound of wood being crushed and fabric being torn. That's my cart. Please stop this. The man cried before he was kicked across the face by a light brown haired man, he was skinny, pale and had a pair of black sunglasses. Think I give a shit about your product, I'm going down the line until we get what we want. Four other men began to stomp the stand owner out while the other stand owners watched on in horror. Quick. You two come into the stand. Junko pleaded while Inari looked at Haruna who was frozen in place, her small fist trembling by her side. Haruna come on, we have to wait for Naruto to get here. Inari grabbed onto the girl's arm as she continued to watch the poor man get stomped out. His cries of pain sent a cold feeling running through her blood, an image of Naruto wiping the sweat off his forehead before giving a thumbs up filled her vision. Aruna stomped her foot down and snatched herself out of Inari's grip, stomping toward the men. Leave that man alone you evil jerks. Aruna yelled, causing the men to turn around to stare at her. Wait a minute I think this is her. One of the men called while the brown-haired thug lifted his glasses to get a look at the trembling Haruna. My name is Haruna Shiazaki. I'm the daughter of the leader of the village. That means you it's my responsibility to protect these people. Now leave him alone. Haruna growled while Inari's eyes widened watching the scared girl holding her ground against them. Well, I'll be damned, it really is her boys. Looks like we don't have to break into the family home after this. The brown-haired thug said while Haruna glared at them, get out of here. No one here in this village has any room from thugs. You should remember what happened to the last one Haruna's speech was cut off by a hand smacking her across the face. Shut up. You're coming with us. Grab her. The brown-haired thug said while they reached toward the girl, Inari frantically looked around from Naruto to show up and save the day. The Eddie still didn't see the boy inside at all. They were going to take Haruna, and everyone was standing there watching it happen. Haruna meanwhile began to tear up as the hands began reaching out toward her, where was Naruto? This was party would swoop in and save her right. He would beat up the bad guys and carry her home like a hero, yet no matter how long she waited she hadn't seen any blonde hair yet. Was she really about to get taken away from her? Was no one really coming to save her? Please someone, anyone. Save her. The hand never grabbed her, only the sound of a meaty thwack filled her ears, her eyes registered the figure standing in front of her slowly. You gonna cry? You big ole crybaby. The Nari spoke with tears running down his face. The punch he just took made him bite his own lip, causing it to bleed slightly. Haruna looked at Inari with shock as the boy stood between her and the thugs, with a bloodied lip and teary eyes. You bullies want her, then you're going to have to go through me. Inari yelled through sniffles, while the brown-haired man narrowed his eyes at the boy protecting Haruna. Seriously? Get out the way kid, I'll seriously kill ya. The brown-haired man growled while Inari stood his ground, no I I won't run. I'll protect her from you nasty jerks and I won't give up. Inari yelled while Haruna kept her shocked look on her face. Hind you asked for it, you little brat. 
The man winded his fist back throwing his punch at Inari, who closed his eyes shut to prepare for the impact. The brown-haired thug suddenly felt a vice grip latch to his arm, the thug looked to his side. The first thing he spotted was an icy blue. The hell do you think you're doing to these kids? Naruto growled while gripping the wrist of the would-be kidnapper whose eyes slowed widened, looking at the blonde boy, wait, aren't you? The brown-haired thug was flung into the rest of the group of thugs while Naruto's glare stayed on them. You two, get back to the shop. Naruto ordered while Inari quickly took the hand of Haruna leading her back to the shop while the thugs began to reorganize, pulling out their weapons. That really is him isn't it? Shut up, just kill him and we'll carry on with our task. Naruto's eyes narrowed at the group of men standing in front of him while he tightened the headband on his head, you jerks wanna fight. Fine. Naruto formed the hand sign for his signature jutsu, unleashing two clones. Make sure to bring his head back. One of the men yelled before they all charged toward Naruto, the blonde also obliged, charging toward them with his clones. Naruto narrowly avoided a swing from the blade of the first thug before he jumped in the air, kicking him directly in the face. One of Naruto's clones was fending off another thug, while his third was weaving around the multiple slashes from several other thugs, Naruto backflipped before he summoned another clone, grabbing it by the shins before he launched it. The flying clone made the hand sign for the shadow clone jutsu as well, creating four more clones that slammed into the thugs, sending them rolling and flying outside of the strip of shops, the brown-haired thug got up while shaking his head before he started weaving hand signs. Don't let up boys. Naruto yelled to his remaining clones while they cheered, damn brat. Water style. Jet stream. The brown-haired thug yelled before a thin powerful stream of water shot out of his mouth toward the blonde. Naruto looked back at the stands before he looked ahead, oh yeah, Naruto summoned more clones who jumped backward to form a barricade in front of the shop area, the blonde and his three clones following in in their rush, avoided the water stream, while the clones in the barricade prevented the water from hitting the shop area. Water style. Aqua shot. Water style. Liquid hell. More water style jutsu were erupting from the thugs, while Naruto continued to advance, one of Naruto's clones stuck its hand out, while Naruto himself started weaving chakra around the clone's palm. The clone in front jumped above both of them creating more clones, Naruto's Uzumaki launcher. The clone yelled out before it grabbed another one of the clones it made, roughly flinging it over toward the thugs. The clone then kicked off of the feet of the last clone it made launching the clone, while it backflip landing next to Naruto and the clone now holding Rasengan, mind, if I get in on that action boss. The clone yelled while Naruto began molding chakra in its palm as well. The other clones meanwhile weaved through the water jutsu avoiding them before one was smacked into by one of the large bursts of water, the other slid and rolled past the thugs throwing kunai at their backs. Here it comes. Naruto yelled while his clones beside him nodded before they both crossed each other's paths, unleashing their Rasengans to tear through the advancing water coming toward Naruto who kept running. The brown hair thug deflected one of the kunai before he threw his own knife, popping the clone behind the group, you're all alone now kid. The brown haired thug yelled as his cohorts deflected the kunai coming toward them. That's where you're wrong idiot. I'm never alone. Naruto yelled with a grin on his face as he weaved another hand sign, causing the deflected kunai to transform into four more clones that dropped down onto the men from above, the thugs tried to avoid the attacks, but the clones were unrelenting. Let's wrap this up. Naruto yelled before he weaved his hand sign again, unleashing another set of clones that appeared by his side, ready for impact boss. One of the clones yelled before Naruto nodded at it. The blonde did a front handspring before grabbing his clone's ankles, spinning it before he launched it at the group of men, another clone ran over and gave Naruto a boost into the air before the blonde reached down to grab his clone, pulling it up to him before he threw it over as well. The last clone jumped into the air with Naruto grabbing his hand before the blonde spun quickly, launching the clone toward the group of men as well, the launched clones joined up with the attacking ones to begin attacking the group of men as well. They all began to attack the group of men in a tight circle, keeping them trapped in the center of it while receiving blows, the clones one by one dropped to the ground, kicking the thugs into the air. You. Zu. Ma. Hi. The clones chanted while the beaten men flew into the air, Naruto spun flipping toward them before he aggressively spun in the air. Triple kick barrage. Naruto yelled as he slammed three different kicks into each of the men in the air, slamming them back into the ground hard enough to kick up dust and form a small crater in the dirt, with a few of the men twitching. Naruto landed among his other clones who were celebrating, those guys were kind of weak sauce huh? Quit goofing around and tie them up before one of them tries something. It would be kind of cool to fight some strong monster ninja though. The clones bickered amongst themselves while tying up the thugs. Naruto turned back toward the shop area with a grin on his face, hey, is everyone alright? Naruto asked while the shop area broke into cheers toward the boy, the blonde boy blinked at the reception before he scratched the back of his head. Naruto. That was amazing. 
you're way stronger than you were the last time I saw you. As expected of the greatest ninja ever, that's my Naruto for you. Inari and Haruna said while Naruto crouched to look at the pair, I'm sorry I left you two alone, I shouldn't have been so careless. Naruto said while Inari shook his head at the blonde boy in front of him. Don't worry about it, I knew you would come and save the day. Inari said while Naruto grinned before he ruffled the younger boy's hair, you were pretty cool back there too you know. Naruto praised with a grin while Inari flushed slightly at the praise before Haruna huffed. You were maybe a tiny bit cool not as cool as Naruto though, so don't let it get to your head. Haruna yelled before turning her head, causing both boys to sweat drop, before Naruto looked toward Inari with a grin. Haruna was probably really scared you should give this to her. Naruto said before he brandished a necklace with a lavender-colored seashell dangling from it, that's the one she was looking at earlier wait, why should I give it to her? She might reject it because it's me. Inari said before Naruto gave the boy a knowing smile. Listen, I kind of got some advice from a dumb expert about this stuff, but when a girl cries, it's a guy's responsibility to be there to give her a shoulder to cry on and dry her tears. This will help her feel better, I promise. Naruto said with a grin while secretly worrying if he butchered Jiraiya's words, though knowing that pervert that might actually have been a good thing. You promise? Inari said sheepishly before Naruto smiled and gave a thumbs up to the boy, believe it. Naruto encouraged while Inari took the necklace before he approached Haruna with it. He watched as the boy stumbled through saying something while the girl accepted the gift bashfully. They slowly morphed into a younger version of himself and Sakura while they looked at each other, the blonde boy gave a sad smile, knowing that it was no longer a reality. Perhaps it never would have been, but while he was here, he would protect them. He would protect this village and its inhabitants. Boss. One of the clones flew over while Naruto raised an eyebrow at the clone, the thugs from earlier, some guy appeared out of nowhere and just took them before he disappeared. We couldn't even see where he went. The clone reported while Naruto sighed. They'll turn up again sooner or later, we'll kick their asses again and take them in for real next time. Right now we have a job to finish up. Naruto said to the clone who nodded in response before disappearing, the two younger kids looked toward Naruto who grinned. Let's go. Naruto yelled while the two younger kids obliged, walking the rest of the way to Haruna's large house stopping at the front of it just before the door, thank you Naruto, I knew you could do it. The brown-haired girl bowed slightly while Naruto nodded. Anytime you need me. Naruto pointed a thumb to himself while Inari huffed, try not to need him too much. The boy commented while instead of the usual back and forth Haruna fiddled with her necklace the boy gave to her. Inari did you want to stay over and play? Haruna spoke quietly causing Naruto's eyes to shoot open, from the amount of time he knew the girl she was always just as loud as he was, Inari meanwhile, well frozen in place before he stiffly turned toward Naruto. I'll tell your mom you'll be staying over. Naruto said before he turned, W wait. You can't just Inari was cut off by a hand tugging at the boy's hat slightly. Have fun, I'll come and get you tomorrow. Naruto said while Inari looked back at the eager Haruna before he looked back at the reassuring Naruto who grinned at him, the dark-haired boy sighed before he turned to go back into the house, with Haruna giving Naruto a little wave before the door closed. Naruto smiled at the door before he walked toward the large gate at the front, before he weaved his hand sign summoning two clones. Hey I need you both to keep an eye out around here. If anything happens, kick their ass and then let me know. Naruto said while the clones gave the boy a salute before they dashed off keeping a close eye on the perimeter around the house, the blonde sighed before he walked out of the gate back onto the streets of the village. I think I can do at least one more job before going home, first I'll grab something to snack on. Naruto said thinking about a stick of dango or two before a familiar purple-haired woman came to mind causing the blonde to immediately shake off the thought. Excuse me young man, I'm sorry to interrupt, but would you be able to help me? An older woman said while Naruto grinned, yeah, of course. What is up? Naruto asked while the older woman extended a sheet of paper toward Naruto. My dog Tonto has gone missing. I know he likes to explore the woods behind my home, but he's never been gone this long. I'm a little worried, could you find him for me? The older woman asked while Naruto nodded, a snack would have to wait until later. This job should be pretty quick to take care of, I'll get him back. Naruto called while the older woman smiled at the blonde boy. Thank you. The older woman said before Naruto began to follow her to her home. Tsunami hung up the last of the sheets to dry in the backyard before she sighed, the dark-haired woman stretched before yawning as she turned toward the door. That wasn't something that she used to do, usually she wouldn't even know she was tired until the last minute before she would fall asleep. Yet ever since Naruto arrived at that bridge a little over a month ago, she's found herself to be more relaxed than ever. Naruto was energetic and a bit busy, but he's been helpful in watching Inari, helping her do housework, the boy was even learning how to cook from her, so she wouldn't have to do as much for dinner. The boy has been nothing but a blessing since he arrived, and Tsunami was nothing but grateful for the blonde boy. 
She had no idea why anyone would have banished him. He was just a kid, what could a child do that was so wrong that banishment was the solution to that problem. The thought of that situation still irked the mother to this day, the cherry on top was that Naruto always believed deep down that his village was right to do so. A child shouldn't have to be burdened with those thoughts. The woman stopped while pouring herself a cup of tea, there it was again. That reminder that Naruto will be going back into the world all by himself again someday soon, that young boy who wants to travel the world. Isn't the world a dangerous place? Statistically the land of fire as a whole had a mortality rate of 24% in just murder during travel itself, not to mention it could be way worse in the other lands that the blonde could find himself traveling to in his journey. Tsunami knew that Naruto was strong, really strong, but there were some ninja out there that were way stronger than even him. Would he be safe out there? Tsunami? Azana asked, emerging from the dining room spooking the younger woman who jumped at the sound of her father's voice. Father, please don't sneak up on me you know I'm bad at sensing people's presences. Tsunami said while well, Tazana raised an eyebrow, you look like you were deep in thought about something, is everything alright? The older man asked while Tsunami took a breath. Shall we discuss it over tea? Tsunami said gently while Tazana nodded his head before the father-daughter pair found themselves sitting in the living room of the house at the small table in the middle, Tsunami took a long sip of her tea before she spoke. It's about Naruto. Tsunami said while Tazana chuckled, right. That kid is making a killing out there. I hate the paperwork, but the village loves this kid. I'm getting requests left and right for this guy, not to mention how much he's helped the village grow in a month. Tazuna gushed about Naruto in a way the man would when the boy was nowhere in sight. He's leaving soon. Tsunami said causing the man to nearly choke on his tea, huh? Did he tell you when? Tazuna asked while Tsunami shook her head. No, but I can feel it. Naruto's going to leave this village and go out into the big bad world all alone, he said he was going to travel remember. Tsunami said while Tazuna sighed, I'm going to miss having that kid around, but shouldn't we believe in him? If he's going to travel, then I have faith in him. Tazuna said while Tsunami gave her father a quick look. All alone. He's no longer a part of any village meaning if something happens to him then he'll. Tsunami trailed off while Tazuna reached a hand over the table, look I'll admit it, I don't really want Naruto to leave either. He's a good kid and a breath of fresh air, but he's also a capable ninja. We shouldn't be hindering him. Tazuna said while Tsunami tried to ignore her father's fair point. It's just since my husband Inari hasn't had someone that he could properly look up to, no offense to you father, but Naruto is a good role model for him. Not to mention he'll be homeless out there just some drifting vagabond. Tsunami explained while Tazuna went to speak but was cut off by the sound of the door opening, revealing a blonde teen walking in. Oi Tsunami, Tazuna where are you guys? The teen called while Tsunami leaned back to see him, we're in the living room. Tsunami spoke calmly while the blonde walked into the room. Hey there kid. Tazuna greeted while the blonde waved, I don't got a lot of time since I'm a clone and all but the boss is working on another job and won't be back till later. Also Inari is staying the night over at Haruna's, but don't worry other clones are on the case. The clone stated while Tazuna grinned before giving the boy a thumbs up. Thank you, make sure to tell Naruto to do his best. Tazuna said while the clone nodded yes sir, the clone saluted before it left out the front door, closing it before it disappeared. The older man grinned at the door before he turned toward his daughter at the other side of the table. Now as I was saying Tsunami. Tazuna looked at his daughter who looked like she was frozen on the spot, before her eyes flicked toward the kitchen, before she quickly got up from her seat dashing into the kitchen, leaving Tazuna confused at the table. The woman quickly returned with a tall bottle and two small glasses, Tsunami wasted no time opening the bottle and filling her glass. She gave the glass a small tap on the table before she knocked it back, drinking it down in one go before sighing. Azuna looked at his daughter with a horrified expression on his face, while she plopped back down to the ground, a flush starting to appear on her face wait. Tsunami, you don't drink. I've never seen you have a sip in your entire life. The older man yelled out in shock while the woman was filling up his glass with sake. Eh sorry, but this is a special occasion so drink up. Tsunami tried to maintain her calm demeanor, but hiccuped at the end of her sentence, turns out there was a lot about his daughter he didn't know. Tazuna took a sip from his glass, while Tsunami hiccuped again. I'm going to do it. Tsunami said while Tazuna gave his daughter a nervous look, do what? The older man asked while she pointed at him drunkenly. I'm going to ask Naruto to stay here in the village. That way he always has a home. Tsunami said while Tazuna's eyes widened at his daughter's words, wait Tsunami that slow down. Tazuna said while well, Tsunami took another drink of sake before she nodded her head, her hair swaying at the movement. He's an orphan right? According to the legal system since he's no longer a leaf shinobi, he should just be recognized as a normal kid instead of ninja, meaning that I can adopt him. That's what I'll do, I'm going to adopt Naruto and give him a home. 
a place where he doesn't have to be thrown away like garbage. Tsunami ranted while Tazuna looked down at his glass, while the red-faced woman hiccuped again, before she took another sip from her glass that she poured herself. I never imagined that having him around would make me so happy, at first I was more than happy to repay a favor, but that boy he's so good and so sweet. Yet he's running around homeless and alone because his village thought he was worthless. Screw them, I'll take care of him. I'll make sure he's never abandoned ever again. Tsunami slurred while her eyes watered slightly. Meanwhile Tazuna kept his eyes on his glass, he had never really thought about it like that. Naruto was left to his own devices in a world filled with dangerous people, yet he always kept a good attitude. Has he been suffering through this kind of stuff for so long that he's gotten used to it? If they leave him alone out there, would he stay used to it? Tazuna finished his glass before he looked at his daughter, you're right, but it needs to be his choice. Tazuna commented while Tsunami nodded her head before she raised both of her fists into the air and took a breath. Alright. Now drink up father, I need plenty of liquid courage. Tsunami yelled while Tazuna sweat dropped at his daughter, at this rate you'll just fall asleep. Tazuna said while the dark-haired woman looked at him before she pouted, shaking her head rapidly at the man who chuckled. The pair enjoyed a couple of drinks together with Tazuna reveling in seeing his normally compass daughter letting loose, the only thing that interrupted them was the sound of the door being knocked on. Atchim. Tsunami's words fused together in a slur while Tazuna chuckled at his daughter standing up from her seat and stumbling toward the door, he was sure that Naruto would make the choice that would be the best for him. Now that he thought about it. Since when did Naruto knock? Naruto was walking toward the Tazuna family residence with multiple bags in his hands filled with food ingredients for dinner. His plan was to eat over here and go back home to rest for the rest of the day. Even he didn't expect that it would take six hours to find that damn dog. He half expected the dog to not even exist three hours in, but he eventually found the poor thing tied up in some old trap rope deep in the woods, which now that he thought about it was odd, since it wasn't hunting season until next month. However, the blonde didn't fret about it too much, he was just focused on what Tsunami was going to teach him how to make next, the boy looked at the door, noticing a slight tear in the paper material that it was made up of. The boy raised an eyebrow before he swung the door open before he saw it, the inside of the house was torn apart. It looked like a small war was waged inside of the house, Naruto immediately dashed into the living room where he found Tazuna under the shreds of the table. Tazuna. Naruto yelled as he pulled the beaten old man out of the mess on the ground, before the older man coughed, Naruto. Tazuna said weakly while the blue-eyed boy nodded his head. Yeah, it's me. What happened? Who did this to you? Naruto spoke with a growl while Tazuna shed a tear while being held in Naruto's arms, they took her the older man said, while Naruto paused at the words before Tazuna spoke again while pointing at the door. They took Tsunami. The comeback kid. Naruto sniffled before he looked back up toward Inari and his family who laughed again when they saw his tear-covered face. Come on now all that crying is making my knees hurt, chow down kid. Your tears are going to make the food salty. Go ahead and eat up Naruto, you've earned it. The family replied while Naruto's hand clenched the headband tightly before he sniffled again. I swear I swear I'll keep doing my best I'll never ever give up Naruto fastened his new headband to his head slowly, before he rapidly stood up pounding a fist to his chest. That's my ninja way. Naruto cheered while the rest of the family cheered with him, he got another glance at them before he smiled. Was this? Was this what having a family is like? What if banished Naruto return with his family, and thanks for watching my video till the end if you enjoy this content, then do consider subscribing to my channel, and leave a like if you guys need the next part, comment down, and thanks for watching the video and see you guys in the next video.